Well, it's that time again. Division I men's college basketball here on Fox 7 as the GCU Lopes, winners of 10 of their last 11 home games, play host to UT Rio Grande Valley. I'm Kate Longworth. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Lopes pregame show where the Lopes have been successful here in GCU Arena with the Havocs having in their backs. They do boast at a 15 and 9 overall record however in whack action they're just a game above 500 and the goal overall for the Lopes has been to be in that top spot when it comes to conference play they are coming off a disappointing loss in conference action last Saturday to CSU Bakersfield however it wasn't the result they wanted on the scoreboard but they did pick up a little lessons on how to bounce back tonight you got to finish no matter who's on the court. If it's a starter, a bench player, regardless of how many minutes you play over the season, you just got to finish. Um, at that point, it's just you got to you got to man up and, and, and put your pride on the line, pretty much. And, and they 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 hit us in the mouth at the end, and we we just didn't hit back. Just got to take care of the ball, um, play harder. Um, I hate to say, it, but we, it was times in the games that outplayed us. And uh, biggest thing was just taking care of the ball. We had a lot of turnovers that really hurt us, especially down the stretch. I had a huge turnover that really, I think, you know, sealed the game for us. But uh, we just got to keep bouncing back and learn from it. The Lopes had a big week in practice over the week, really putting in the effort. And I can tell you, just watching their pregame warm-ups tonight, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. So you think that that loss weighed on their minds. They really want to go out there, turn things around. Both going in their favor is the fact that they did beat UTRGV as their first whack, play, whack game this season. That was back in January. So we'll see how it all goes tonight. And the guys who will be calling the action from tip-off to the very end is our very own Barry Boutel and Scott Williams. Guys, I know we've been wanting to get back here in the arena to see a different result. I imagine that's how the players feel as well. No doubt about it, yeah. Some late miscues in the game for the Lopes. They, they kind of were in the driver's seat for most of that game, but the last five or six minutes, you certainly saw the change in the momentum. There was a change of momentum, and that's the way the whole game was played. They had the momentum throughout most of the ha first half. They took the lead at halftime by five, but when they came back out in the second half, it was Bakersfield who changed the complexion of the game with their effort, constantly pressing Dwayne Russell all over the floor, giving GCU something that they hadn't seen quite some time. Other guys got to step up and make plays. They didn't. Been through a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball, low percentage shots, and they faded down the stretch. And some foul trouble. Two starters following out in uh, Freyer and Vernon. It really limited the Lopes' opportunities. But the Roadrunners gave them all they could handle to the defending WAC champs. Let's take a look at the WAC standings up to the minute right now. We see New Mexico State there here Saturday night. It'll be packed in here. 22 and 2 overall, 8 and 0 in the conference. And absolutely rolling. Talk about those 20 games that they've won in a row. You see LU another win in the conference tonight as they took down Chicago State. Dwayne Russell is a guy that all Lopes fans have been following throughout the course of the season. And for Dwayne, a, a, maybe a bit of an off night. Scoring in 12 points only. Yeah, certainly an off night. A 3 of 13 shooting, 11 points off his uh, whack leading 23 points that he generally scores. But he was trying to be aggressive, but they kept taking the basketball out of his hands. It was a smart game plan, executed for perfection. Got to give the Bakersfield players a lot of credit for slowing down zero the hero. Most turnovers in a game this season for Dwayne Russell. Another guy that has stepped up throughout the course of the season is Josh Braun. He played all 40 minutes of this game. I love the mayor because he gives you everything you got. Wasn't his best effort by any stretch of the imagination, but he simply goes out there and plays hard. I love that one right there. What a great post move. The formal four guy working down there on the block there with the step under the up and under. And then I love that getting on the glass. And, you know, he's got to be more aggressive, but they're going to take the ball out of Russell's hand. He's got to be the guy that wants to get the first pass from Russell so he can lead the attack either with shot or creating something for his teammates. 16.7 boards for Josh Braun from Anthem, Arizona. Well, they take on a team in UTRGV that is two and six in the conference. They blew an 11 point lead and a loss against UMKC. They are the highest scoring team in the WAC, but they are the last in scoring defense 
and they love to rain from the arc. Yeah, they only like to play on one side of the court. They yeah. got a, they got a couple guys that flat out love to score the basketball. One of five teams in the country with two, more than two players averaging more than uh, 17 and a half points. And you got to love Antonio, the green machine. This guy is leading the nation with 103 point made field goals. Now he's taking 247, but don't let that stop. He's shooting 41% from behind that arc and he's a streaky shooter. I'd love for him to get up with uh, double digits and threes a night, and don't be surprised if he makes five or six of them. We'll look at Antonio Green, and we'll also be eyeing Nick Dixon. He leads the team in scoring and rebounding. Well, that'll set the scene here. Kate, we'll send it back over to you. Well, guys, back in October, November, we were talking about the goal for this team, and that was, of course, to finish up at top of the WAC standings. That looking a little bit like it's going to be hard to attain with New Mexico State really just on fire right now. So, Scott, I ask you, from a player's perspective, when do you go out there tonight and to finish off the season strong? How do you realign your goals? It's getting back to what GCU basketball is trying to establish here. The more tough-nosed approach on both ends of the floor, but especially on the defensive end. Coach Marley knows he's going to have teams that will be able to score. He runs pro sets. They're going to get lots of shots. He likes to play up and down. I think what he's most disappointed in is not being able to get stops at crucial point in times during games, getting the key rebound, you know, clogging up the lane, getting that deflection that leads to a turnover. Those are the type of things that he's most interested in seeing from his team the rest of the way. Getting back to play in the GCU round of basketball that they want to establish going forward for not only the rest of this season, right. but future years to come. Yeah, that makes sense, and I think that's the emphasis we've heard a lot around campus this week, just getting back to the basics that GCU basketball is known for. And so we're going to go straight to the man who knows it all to see exactly what that game plan is. Obviously, it was a disappointing game last Saturday, but that is in the past now. Dan Marley sits down with Barry Hotel to get a little temperature gauge on how the team is handling the pressure for tonight. We'll have more when the little pregame show continues on Cox 7 right after this. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. For me, choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion of becoming a sports broadcaster. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Knowing that I could talk to a professor or a counselor about literally anything that has to do with my academia or even just my personal life was encouraging and exciting to know. The friends and the roommates that I've had in the last three years have made my quality of life a thousand times better. I am a GCU Lope, and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. You can support your GCU Lopes in the 2017 Coaches vs. Cancer three-point challenge. The American Cancer Society, the National Association of Basketball Coaches, and the nation's premier college basketball programs are teaming up in the 2017 Coaches vs. Cancer three-point challenge. Pledge your donation now by going to pledgeit.org slash cbc grand canyon. Follow the national competition at three-point challenge Org. Hope's pregame show continues from GCU Arena. Barry Buteau alongside the head coach of the Lopes, Dan Marley. And coach, uh, we talk after a, a disappointing loss, but uh, love to kind of get your thoughts about uh, some remarks you made to Richard Obert at the Arizona Republic about uh, getting a little soft, apparently. You need to get that physicality back. Well, uh, you know, I just said that the, it was something that was, I think was my fault. I know it was my fault. Uh, you know, we had so many injuries early that guys went down, season-long injuries. Uh, at times, we were practicing with six scholarship players, sometimes seven. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of guys to practice, and I kind of backed off uh, as far as the intensity of practice. Um, we never really practiced long, but we really practice hard. We get after it. We compete a lot. Um, I backed off it because I was uh, kind of a gun shy of, of the injuries and didn't want anybody else to get hurt and trying to save guys' legs. And I always talk about getting it either uh, when we play or on the practice floor. And it started to get in where we weren't getting it in either spot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a mentality for the coaching staff, for the players. 
uh, and our mentality is always give it 100%, uh, play as hard as you can in practice and in games. And the mentality went the other way. Uh, we didn't play as hard as we could in practice, and I think that showed in games. Bakersfield, obviously a, a team that won the WAC a year ago, and they hang tough with you here until the last four or five minutes, and then uh, they kind of took it away well, from Well, it was disappointing. Uh, you know, we led most of that game, and we didn't do uh, the little things to win the game. But, you know, when your best player, Dwayne, uh, shoots three for 13 and have seven turnovers, when your best big, uh, Keontae, fouls out in 14 minutes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and we got, uh, you know, we, we sent the clips into the, to the league, and the, and, the, and the refs came back and said three of those fives weren't fouls. So it doesn't make you feel any better, but uh, he goes out. Uh, Jared Martin sick to only plays 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to win games like that. But that being said, uh, at home, we got to find a way to win a, a, a whack game like that, especially against Bakersfield, and we didn't do it. So that's on us. That's on me. Uh, we just have to get better. Uh, the, the officials obviously should never be a story in the outcome of a game, but the, the uh, case was that fouls were committed. Jared came down with an illness. Guys had to push back into the lineup. Fifi Adu came into the game. He had double digits in scoring for you. Well, I, I expect, and I I'd said this a while ago, that Fifi and Oscar are going to play more minutes. Mm -hmm, we got to mm -hmm. start developing these kids for, for next year. And Fifi's starting to step up. I think the more time he has on the floor, the better he's going to be. He's just a heck of an athlete. He can really defend. Uh, he is a really good shooter, though he is not showing it as of yet. Uh, he's athletic and get to the rim. He's got a six foot ten wingspan. So it's my job to get him out there, get some experience uh, in game time, and, and he's done a better job of that. You can tell from a physicality standpoint, just from sure athleticism, Fifi has it, as does Oscar Freyer. Yeah. Who are you knew coming out of? Yeah, uh, both high those guys are great athletes, uh, especially Fifi as far as his strength. Uh, can really guard one-on-one. -on -one. Oscar could be a terrific defender if that's what his mindset is. So mm -hmm. uh, as a coach, I have to do a better job of developing those guys. But, uh, you know, it's a thin line. You also want to win. Um, so our guys, uh, you know, Dwayne and those guys deserve it. Uh, so we're going to play. Uh, you know, Jared's not going to start tonight. Uh, for the first time in his career wow. here. Yeah, uh, he's missed two practices because of the illness. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no, it's no, uh, you know, he struggled all year long with the shot. So maybe a, a change of scenery coming off the mm -hmm. bench. Uh, he'll still play a lot of minutes. Jared's a terrific player for us. But we're going to start Darian Clark at the five and Keontae at the four. Give us a little more physicality. Oscar at the three and then Josh and Dwayne. So maybe a, a change of scenery for uh, for Jared coming off the bench will do him some good. And Keontae followed out and you go with uh, Kerwin Smith. He obviously steps in and he had double digits and rebounds. And he probably should have had 15 or 16 rebounds. Yeah. I mean, Kerwin is getting better, uh, mm -hmm. but it's never enough with him. He's got to just do a good job of, of getting rebounds and getting balls out of this area. He gets a lot of rebounds when it's in his area. But as far as going getting rebounds, uh, he's got to get his motor better. Uh, he has gotten better. Uh, he's just a redshirt sophomore. So that's another guy we have to continue to develop. His motor has to continue to get better, uh, and he's got to push himself. You mentioned Darian Clark. He's going to be in the starting lineup tonight, his first game back after re-aggravating that shoulder injury, something he's probably going to be hampered with over the remainder of the year. What are your thoughts about Darian Clark in his first game back? Uh, I thought he was better. You know, Darian's a guy who's he's got a lot of ability. He's big. He's strong. He's athletic. He can really rebound the basketball. And it's been a very disappointing year for him because of the injuries. He's never really gotten to great shape because he hasn't been able to sustain any kind of, uh, of playing time because of that. So uh, hopefully in these last uh, six, uh, seven games where we have left, uh, he can really turn it on and make us uh, you know, go for a run here. And I think uh, with, his, uh, with athleticism and his strength, he can do that. Uh, I just hope he does it. I mean, he's had a hard year. The uh, UTRGV Vaqueros come in. They are the uh, highest scoring offensive team in the WAC, but they have the uh, their last in scoring defense, and they, they love to throw from the arc. Uh, they shoot a lot of threes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a team that's going to press you all over the floor. They're going to play zone. They're going to play man. They're going to trap. Uh, at uh, UTRGV, they trap Dwayne every time. They didn't leave Josh. Uh, they'll trap wherever on the floor. So it's kind of one of those unpredictable defenses. You have to be ready for it. Uh, turnover, turnover, turnovers have been a huge problem for us as of late, so we got to take care of the basketball. Uh, we got to be able to uh, attack the basket, get guys involved, um, and then you know defend. Uh, Nixon and Green. Uh, mm -hmm. Nixon's been really good for him. Green shoots a lot of threes. He can get hot. So we have to do a good job of finding those guys, and then just you know we got to play the way we play. I'm, right. I'm tired of. You know, we don't want to be, oh, uh, here's who we've got to play tonight. We just got to play the way we got to play. Play hard, not turn the ball over, rebound the heck out of the ball, uh, and just do what we're supposed to do. And no worries about looking past this game, knowing that Saturday is Zero worry. I mean, we're four and three. Right, I mean, right. are you kidding me? There's, there's no, you know, we, we got to play well against whoever we won't win. So this is a game that uh, obviously is a must win. They're all must wins from yep. here on out, and we cannot look uh, 
uh, past these guys from New Mexico State on Saturday. That, that's just asinine. We're four and three. We got to win this game, and we got to play well to do it. All right, coach. Good luck All tonight. All right, thanks. Dan Marley, our guest, stay with us more. The Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena. There's high expectations for the GCU softball team. Coming off a second place WAC finish, a preseason coach's selection to win the WAC and the debut of the new softball facility. All coming up as we preview the team after this timeout. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. As the sun sets on the valley, things are just heating up under the lights here at GCU Arena as we're counting you down to tip off as the Lopes at 15 and 9, 4 and 3 in whack action post UTRGV. They beat them back in January, hoping for the same result here tonight on their home court. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us on the Lopes pregame show. We're going to be talking a lot of basketball tonight. Don't you worry. But let's talk about some of the new facilities around campus, most specifically the softball stadium, which will debut that brand new stadium debuting this week as tomorrow the softball team takes the diamond to tee off the new season. And with that new stadium and the team returning a core group of players that finished an impressive 35 and 15 last year, well, it's safe to say you can probably expect good things from this year's squad. And the WAC coaches agree, voting the Lopes in the preseason poll to take it all. And so the table is set for what should be a special season ahead. It's going to be big having the seniors that we have. We have Taylor, Bailey, Cam, and Jenna. And so we have two senior pitchers. We have a senior outfielder. We have a senior infielder. And all four of them have been, uh, have been in the lineup the majority of their career. So they've kind of seen it. They've been there, done that. They were here for the first WAC championship. So they know, know what it takes to win another conference championship. And they just have tremendous presence with the kids on the team. The kids really respect them. We're fortunate to have the two lefties back, obviously seniors, very different pitchers, Bailey and Taylor are, from each other. And then you bring in Bobo and you throw in Mariah, two very different right-handed pitchers as well. So we've got a great mix, very mature staff, including Bobo, even though she's a freshman. She's already had a lot of success at the club level, high school level, international level. So we're, we're really excited about the pitching staff this year. I expect Shane and Sierra to build on what they did last year. You know, they're both really good athletes. They put up great numbers, but the scouting reports are out on them, so they have to figure out how to plug the holes in their swings. You know, everybody has weaknesses, and so we have to continue to work with their strengths and also plug up their weaknesses. And they're also working more on their uh, short game, too, that's just going to open up their power game. And then I just expect more consistency on the field, you know, and, and I'm seeing a lot of really good things out of both of them so far, and they're really working on their fundamentals, which are just going to take them to the next level. We're really excited about the stadium. Watching it go up, it's kind of surreal. We're super grateful to Pono's Construction, President Mueller, the administration. You know, they're, they're really creating this atmosphere for our softball program, and, and the stadium's just going to be unbelievable. It's going to be a great experience for families and the rest of our fan support, but our kids are just really looking forward to being back home and, and getting to play in this beautiful facility. We need to see where we're at always, and, and it's always a good baseline to play against the top teams. You know, we're going to get to see Arizona, Washington, Stanford, Baylor, Northwestern, Utah, BYU. So 
that's just going to tell us where we're at and where we need to go. It's also important in the RPI, so we can we want to get the highest RPI we can, and in doing so, we have to play these tough schools, not only so it helps us get better, we learn as a staff, we learn as a team, and, uh, and that's just going to make us more competitive in, in where we want to go to get into this top 25 ranking. All right, well, head coach Ann Pearson and the Loops open the season tomorrow against Northern Colorado at 2.30, then Bradley at 5 in that doubleheader for Friday action. Games are scheduled all throughout the weekend. You can catch that Northern Colorado game at noon on Saturday on GCU TV. Other Loops teams also in action this week, so we wish them all the best of luck. Well, still to come here on the Loops pregame show on Cox 7. There are lots of cookies in the arena tonight, courtesy of the Phoenix Rescue Mission. We hope you're hungry to talk about community service because we're going to get to the bottom of this. Free cookies, did someone say? We'll find out right after this. Maybe not free, but they're going to a good cause. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things that can't necessarily be taught, and so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you changed my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back, a live look inside GCU Arena as we count you down to tip off. And tonight, you could be a part of the game in action, even if you're at home sitting on the couch. Just grab that phone, computer that's near you, and use the hashtag LopesRising on Twitter and Instagram. Right now, you can see Game Day Ready. That's a tweet scrolling on the bottom of our screen, and that tweet could be yours. Jump in on the action, following us on social media. I'm Kate Longworth. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show here on Cop 7. I'm joined now by a very special guest, Jay Corey, president and CEO of the Phoenix Rescue Mission. Thank you so much, Jay, for being here with us. And I know you're engaged in social enterprise and how it benefits your Phoenix Rescue Mission and your mission statement. So just take me through what it's all about. Well, uh, you know, our clients that are in our recovery programs, and uh, uh, they need to develop vocational skills. So if you marry the idea of vocational development and the need for us to offset the cost of our programs, uh, you come up with social enterprise. And one of the biggest that we've started is a food service related social enterprise. Uh, it has Mission Cookies, Mission Possible Cookies, Mission Possible Catering, and hopefully soon Mission Possible Cafe. And we, I know, on our staff, are excited to hear about these cookies. I've seen them already selling at the concession stands tonight. But take me through. You've got a box on your lap. But just take me through the partnership you have with GCU tonight, because I know there's a lot of Mission Possible cookies here at the arena. Absolutely. Well, the partnership goes a ways back, because uh, we've had a just a wonderful relationship with Grand Canyon for years. Uh, we have students in the counseling program that are coming to doing their practicum and getting it uh, for their internships there. We have a, uh, the School of Nursing that comes and does the same. So on multiple levels, we have ongoing relationship with Grand Canyon. And in meeting with Brian and, and discussing that and sharing some of the ideas of how we might partner, uh, my goodness, he just has blessed us uh, because he's put together uh, some teams that are really wrapping around some of the initiatives that we're doing. And uh, so, yeah, one of them is helping us design uh, and prepare to open our restaurant this coming year. Uh, and then, of course, there's one to help us market the cookies. And so, hence, tonight is cookie night. Know, and fans, of course, I think everyone loves cookies, but it's great because I think your mission statement about what Mission Possible does is getting the point across tonight. Fans who are in the stands are eating cookies. They're feeling proud of those calories because they're going to a good cause. And you mentioned that restaurant. Just take me through the future plans for the Mission Possible Cafe. 
Well, um, we're, we're working on the business plan right now. Uh, we want to budget so that it's open uh, next fiscal year for us, which will be after July. So our best guess right now is we'll be open in September. It will be a breakfast, lunch, menu, and but it will be a fully vocational training restaurant, an actually live restaurant that is teaching these skills, helping to offset our program costs, but really helping to uh, a pathway for jobs for our clients. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight and all that you're doing for the community. Thank you very much, Kate. Good to see you. All right, you too. All right, well, pl plenty more to come. The Havoc, they always have energy, but when it's cookie night, sponsored by the Phoenix Rescue Mission, you know there's a lot of excitement uh, here in the crowd, to say the least. We saw more on the Lopes Free Game Show coming up right after this. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting edge next generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Hello Phoenix, this is Jerry Colangelo from Grand Canyon University. You can join the GCU community by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors and get the support you need to excel. I look forward to seeing you on campus. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back. The Purple Pregame Party in full effect here at GCU Arena as the Lopes look to bounce back after a disappointing loss Saturday night to CSU Bakersfield. But now they have a chance to turn things back around with their WAC opponent UT RGV in the house tonight. And let's take a look at the WAC action because it can be a tight race, we know, down the stretch. First, looking in on the women's team right now, the Lopes trailing at UT RGV. 23-15 at the break, and Laramie and Massapoy not in the game tonight. They have been suspended for a little brawl, a scuffle that broke out in their last game. Meanwhile, second half action, Utah Valley trailing at UMKC, 46-53 the score there. Seattle U beat Chicago State, 90-65. William Powell with 24 points, 10 boards. And the other game we'll obviously be keeping action on tonight, aside from the Lopes game, is New Mexico State at CSU Bakersfield. And looking at NCAA Top 25, the game tonight to keep an eye on, and we'll be bringing you score updates, is Scott Williams Star Hills going head to head with number 18 Duke. First meeting was Jan the first meeting between these two teams was back on January 24th, 1920. Now, up until now, these two teams over the last 48 years are going to head-to-head, -head, have 48 wins each, and each team has scored 7,437 points. You can't make up stats like that, so we'll see who the tiebreaker goes to tonight. But the game we're all focused on is right here on Cox 7. GCU, 15-9, trying to make it 16-9, 5-3 in the WAC. As they take on UTRGV, tip-off is right after this. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Or actually, maybe jump up really quick. Grab those snacks and come right back, because we'll be right back with you. Game action and all. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692.
Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We have to start establishing this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're a better set than them. Let's go. Come on, go get him now. Let's go. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes host the Vaqueros from UTRGV. Hello and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, in the heat of the battle, the Lopes fell 65-62 to Bakersfield. How does the wax standings look at this very moment, Scott? Those New Mexico State Aggies are on top of perfect day to know. Yeah, on top, rolling 20 straight. Bakersfield moves solely into second place. There are the two-game lead over, actually two-and-a-half game lead over GCU. They need this one tonight, not so much for the standings, but to reestablish the way they want to play basketball. As I mentioned, a tough three-point loss to Bakersfield here on their home court. The Lopes look to rebound against the Vaqueros, but an off night, still double digits for Dwayne Russell, but just 12 points. Yeah, he was pressured all over the basketball court, especially in the backcourt, 75 feet away from the hoop. Wasn't quite used to that. Had to get the ball up quite a bit. That's why he had such limited opportunities offensively. Got to get some guys that step up off that uh, bench in the starting group, especially Josh Braun. Take that basketball, be more of an initiator of the offense. The Carrolls come in just two and six in the conference. One of their leaders, their sophomore guard from Tupelo, Mississippi, Antonio Green, over 40% from the arc. Antonio, the green machine, he's shooting 40% from the arc, but he's also got 103 point shots in the, on the season. He's leading the nation at the three point field goals made. It's the first of a couple of back to backers. Saturday night, New Mexico State, right here on their home court. But first, the Vaqueros battling the Lopes. Let's send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GCU Arena for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by GCU student body president-elect, Nate Carpenter. Please play with me. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us together here today. Thank you for allowing us to celebrate these athletes that you've given wonderful talents to. Lord, please watch over them as they go out through the, throughout the competition today as we celebrate brotherhood. And Lord, please just watch over everyone, make sure they're injury free. And Lord, just thank you for all the wonderful gifts that you bless us here every single day with, all the love and all the grace. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Nate. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Scottsdale Christian Academy Choir under the direction of Tom Bookout.
Thank you, Scottsdale Christian Academy. Great job with our prayer, Nate Carpenter, the new student body president, and as always, a stellar performance from Scottsdale Christian Academy Choir. UTRGV, the Vaqueros, 10 and 15 overall. They're 1 and 11 on the road, 2 and 6 in the Western Athletic Conference. They lost 73-60 at home to UMKC last Saturday. They were 8 and 22 a year ago. Lou Hill in his first season as head coach. His assistants are Jay Stedman, Kenya Crandall, and Luke McKay. Here is his starting five. Nick Dixon, their leading scorer and rebounder, Lou Stallworth, Antonio Green, Xavier McDaniel Jr., and Antonio's Antonius Rabigwi. You're going to have to watch Tricky Nicky. He's an absolute fantastic player. Averages 18 and a half points per game. Uh, he went for 41 of their 81 points at a loss at Utah Valley University. We shot 15 of 26. He's a straight flamethrower. Keep an eye on that kid. Lou Hill spent the pre previous five seasons as an assistant coach at Oklahoma, but time now to introduce you to Grand Canyon University. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Canyon State Credit Union. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. For Dan Martley, Dwayne Russell, Josh Braun, Oscar Freyer, Darian Clark, and Keontae Vernon. Yeah, they need Keontae Vernon to bounce back in a big way. He's like, like a lift operator with his play. He's been up and down. He got in bad foul trouble, but played limited minutes and only scored two points and one rebound. Tonight, they need him to be a lift driver drive this team tonight to a win. Dan Marley in his fourth season as head coach, the associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistants, Chris Cremelone and TJ Benson, director of basketball operations is Luke Dallariba. The assistant director of basketball operations is Deche Fall. And the graduate assistant is Brendan Sabian. The Lopes are 15 and nine overall, 11 and three on their home court, four and three in the Western Athletic Conference. As you look at Dwayne Russell from Peoria High School, it is Peoria night here at GCU Arena. Shaq Carr in the middle of the circle before these two teams tip off. Your three keys, Scott. Yeah, with the first one is don't mess with Texas. I mean, uh, correction, make that. You better mess with Texas if you want to play for Coach Marley, getting after his team for not playing hard enough the last couple times out. Run them off that three-point line, force them to stay in that yard. That area between the three-point line and the painted purple square and then the wild wild west or is it the wild wild whack i'm unsure but the lopes need to bring lots of energy and light at that scoreboard tonight because that's what the vaqueros are going to try to do you have transition buckets low rotations getting fouled underneath the pass out from under the paint that leads to uncontested looks they need all that more tonight in whisper rock hear the coaches voices whispering to you as you Execute the game plan, making the extra pass, rebounding both ends of the floor offensively and defensively. Running the floor, taking the charges, blocking the shots in help side defense. They Lieutenant Dan's voice whisper in his troops' ears tonight. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, I like that. You like Lieutenant Dan? Yeah, I do. I love that movie. That was uh, Forrest Gump, That's right? That's right. Tom Hanks, what an actor. We are underway at GC Arena. The crowd will remain on its feet uh, until the Lopes hit their opening bucket. Dwayne Russell making his way up the court. The officials are Wilson Holland, Casey McClellan, and DJ Nelson. Holy moly! That's what I'm talking about. Execution of your half court offense. Wonderful job by Keontae Vernon. Flash it to that high post. Slips it back door to cutting Josh Braun. A hoop and a harm. <laughs> Put Coach Marley. I gotta get his coach, to show Coach Marley over there. He had the biggest there. smile I've seen in the whole uh, year. You know, they normally go with that high handoff with Keontae. They're already getting one from Josh Brown. They mixed it up, but what a kind of a role reversal as Vernon fished it to Braun. Quickly back to a grimace for Coach Marley, but I promise he did have a pretty big smile. I saw it. 
Dixon, little handoff, driving, Stallworth kicks back out. Dixon, nowhere to go. Oh, could have been a travel very quickly. In the corner it goes, six on the shot clock. Turning back out, four. Oh, my goodness, look at here. Antonio Green, a long three. Off the mark, rebound, pulled down by Keontae Vernon. Wonderful defense, cutting off that middle penetration each and every time. Long three attempt. Out of, but pulled down by Clark. Oh, way off the mark, rebound, pulled down by the McCarroll. Yeah, he got himself a great board, got twisted underneath and threw up a wild lefty hook. Three is off the mark for the McCarrolls. Star Wars, unsuccessful. Uh, you got already good to see what Vernon's doing. He's got more rebounds in the first two minute of this game than he had in the whole game yesterday, or on uh, Saturday. Big up-tempo opening for the Lopes. Keontae Vernon fouled on the play. And one rebound in 14 minutes versus Bakersfield. He's already snatched two on the defensive end, and then I love that one right there. He's too big, too strong down there to catch the ball that close to the basket. Those Vaqueros had to double team him and foul him. Donis Rabigui already with two personal fouls. Vernon connects. Rabigui is going to have to check out coming back into the game for the first time. Mike Hoffman has appeared in. 25 games, started 10. Right, right. And a little help. Good to see Keontae. Hit close. Yeah, that, that's an excellent sign. He's exactly, he's into it. Back out front, Antonio Green driving, pushes back out, leaves it there for Dixon. Again, the Vaqueros leading scorer and rebounder. Loose ball on the floor. I think they're going like to call a jump ball, but it looked more like a rugby scrum right down there in front of Lieutenant Dan. He's going to like the way his players got on that court after that loose ball. And Josh Braun, he's always in there mixing it up, isn't he? Doesn't seem like he just got a nose for the basketball. Look at first to the floor. Braun, give him a plus point. Possession arrow belonging to the Vaqueros. 11 on the shot clock. Inbound by Stallworth. Down low, Dixon dropping baseline, looks underneath. Hoffman up over the top. Oh, my. What? Oh, kid? What? Is they giving that to Freya? Marley is, uh, okay. Well, Mike Hoffman comes, he comes flying in here to try to get this ball. Let's see if Josh Braun pushes him in the back. This is Ted. I thought it was Josh Braun. If anybody might have had a hand in his ball of his back. Green not there, but the put back by Hoffman. Ah, first time they don't get on that offensive glass, and they have to pay the price. But the Vaqueros get the scoreboard here. Three-point lead by the low. Russell quickly burning to Frayer. Frayer at the arc. Looking inside. Ball away from the play. They got Stallworth yep. down there. <laughs> Stallworth was wrestling with an alligator down there. He, he wanted no part of Vernon on that low block. He said, let me just go ahead and take my personal foul, make him take this thing out of bounds underneath. Vernon. Braun, three-point attempt. Off the rim, pulled down easily by Antonio Green. Stallworth over to Dixon. Dixon leaves for Green. Green looking for some room, stopping, popping. Too heavy, rebound, pulled down and muscled down by Clark. They control the glass on that one there. It was one and done. That's just face Coach Marlon's smile on that sideline. Clark twisting, turning, finding some room, goes left, not there. Pulled down by Green. I like his footwork down there, but it's just not finishing. Check that Xavier McDaniel Jr. with that. Name sounds familiar. Loose ball out of bounds. Inbound for the Lopes. Yeah, but Nick Dixon, I don't know who he was trying to pass that one to. He just got confused by all of the players underneath. Threw it on, on, on the baseline. And we going to get Oscar Fleur out of this game as he's limping to the sideline back with the uh, head athletic trader. Jordy's going to take a look at him back there. Jordy has been a busy man all season long. Daniel Russell draws him in, leans in, and Xavier McDaniel Jr. gets a foul. Well, you can see that Coach Hill wants to try to keep the ball out of Russell's hands as much as possible, taking a page from the Bakersfield playbook. They were successful in the second half of really 
pressuring Russell and making other players make plays. Clock underneath right hand. Oh, it doesn't drop. Good pass from Braun. Oh, there is Martin in the game. That's just the rust of Clark, who's been sidelined quite a bit with that shoulder first game back last weekend, and just got a little rust on that game that he's got to work off because he can get those balls to fall. Carroll with some new bodies. Russell picked off by the Lopes. Left for Martin, stopping Russell beyond the arc. Might have move on Hoffman, goes to his left. Bounce pass, Vernon quickly to Braun. He pulls down. Under Drive to the baseline, twisting back out, left hand it in. Well, that little big man knows how to put the ball in with the left hand. Great footwork, post moves down there by the former four man. Nice one with the left hand, spinning away from the defense. McDonough leaves her. Dixon driving down low and gets the basket and the foul on Darian Clark. And, and Martin can't believe it. Martin got beat on a backdoor cut that the best defender normally never gets beat on. But look at what back this one by Josh Braun here. I love that one right there. Takes him hard with that right hand dribble. Defender can't stop as quick as the offensive player. That's spinning left away from the defense. Plenty of room to visualize the front of the rim and he knocked it down. Going back to Jared Martin, he won't fall for that one twice, that's for sure. You know, he's a little under the weather last weekend. Limited minutes in that basketball game against Bacon. He only played 12 minutes, so we'll see how he does today. That's why he's coming off the bench. Good practice for two days. Darian Clark underneath. Oh, he got stopped before he could put it home. Wow, that was Keontae Vernon with another nice little shovel pass oh, underneath. With a big, going big to big down there. That's almost 14 feet of funnel on that baseline. Working out together down there, the bigs really utilizing some of these backdoor passing skills they've been learning from these coaching staff. 15-57 on the clock, the Lopes up seven to four. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well guys, right behind me, you might recognize a basketball game, name rather, number 25, Xavier Daniel McDaniel Jr. And you know, they say a father and son can share the love of the game. They can also pass along their eye color or their hair color. Well, how about their skills on the basketball court? That's right, Father Xavier Sr. played 14 seasons in the NBA, averaging just over 15 points with six boards. He was the first person to lead the NCAA in both scoring and rebounding his senior year at Wichita State. He was elected to the College Basketball Hall of Fame for such a feat back in 2013. And I would say that his son has some big shoes to fill, but I'm guessing Senior is just very proud of his son following in his footsteps. And Xavier Senior, the X-Man, did play with the Sonics, Suns, Knicks, Celtics, and Nets. So I'm guessing Mr. Scott Williams, he probably ran into the X Factor a time or two. Yeah, the X Man, he didn't take it easy on me either. I was a young fellow when he was at the, I guess, middle of his career with the New York Knicks. We had battles with the Chicago Bulls, and I remember having to go up against those Knicks where they had Oakley and Ewing and uh, the X Man, of course. They were probably the strongest team in the Eastern Conference. I, had to go out and separate X and Michael Jordan one time when they were forehead to forehead. That was about, a, about as scared as I'd ever been having to step between those two because they were, they were about to lock horns. I had to go out there and separate them. But his, his son can play a little bit too. Now he had a double yeah. double a month ago back in uh, Key Arena against Seattle where his dad used to do all that damage. Had a wonderful game and well, actually he had 10 and 4, but he had a double double before that. Uh, as well, so he's really coming on and developing into a quite the player himself. Also leads to the team and following out of five games. Clark connects. Both started one for one since they're one for six from the field. Hold a four-point lead. Stallworth leaves. McDonald. Poor Mo McDonald doesn't have his name on the back of his jersey. Long range shot connecting for Hoffman. Yeah, Hoffman, that's what you like. You like to get that ball down in that painted area, even though Braun was able to get the big block. He didn't secure that loose ball, finds his way to Hoffman, who can't it. It's the one point advantage for the Lopes. Vernon, back to Russell. Braun trying to free himself up. Cross court, Martin picked it up with his right hand. Russell, eight, seven on the shot clock. 
Russell quickly back behind. Oh, look who he gave it to. Look out, he got to fire it up. Russell, heavy. Rebound pulled down. Clark not there. Oh, I would have bet you Chocolate Sunday he was going to make that one after missing his previous three, but still a lot of rust on that game. I like the fact that he's being active, though. Several extra opportunities around that basket will pay off. Loy with a nice feed from Hoffman underneath. Oh, my goodness. Hoffman goes outside, strokes a three, then he finds a nice interior pass and gives the Vaqueros the lead. Going to get the Russell up the ball in Russell's hand. Oh, Clark with an errant pass. Get a field goal shooting. Stallworth driving. Martin got a hand on that. I think he lost it. Oh, he, he did lose I, it. I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think Eddie Lopes got that one. The officials got it right. Lopes ball going the other way. But you notice that's what they were doing. They were making, they trapped Russell out here 40 feet away from the basket. And then they, they make somebody else try to make a play. That time it was whoops, someone who wasn't capable of turned it, turned it over. And Clark, they got Clark out of this basketball game. It's got to be Mark Carp. Ron to initiate the offense. Oh, man, they're giving the ball away. Has to be a list the last three times. Driving in, Mike Nuambazor. Well, I like that. One official wasn't sure who the ball went off. He asked his other official if he got a clean look at it. He comes in from the sideline, lopes ball out of bounds. Look at this full court pressure. Quick Coach look, at, quick look at it one more time here. And, well, our camera ain't couldn't quite catch it either. Russell to his right, stopping, popping, God! Oh, that didn't even tickle the time. Yeah, it seemed like the, the net barely even rippled, you're right. But he loves that one hard dribble to his right for the pull-up jump shot. The pride of Peoria. Is that what we're calling that? That's right. Yeah, Peoria and I, his grandma and his uncle had a little half-court uh, ceremony before the game. Should be on him. The leaders in the entire nation. Too short on the turnaround by Hoffman. Driving, burning off the glass, too heavy. And that was a good no call, even though there was contact. Driving doesn't find the bucket for Nuabazor. Several lopes hustling back, though, prevented the offensive rebound and put back. It's still going to be UTRGP on that baseline, but they would have given up an, e an easy one if it wasn't for the extraordinary hustle of a couple of lopes players cracking back in defense. Fifier Du checks in for Vernon. Rachel changes by the Vaqueros as well. Walter Jones in the game. Tomas is in the game. Here's Green driving. Knocked out of bounds. Martin guy guarding uh, Green and it's knocked out. He's got athletic hands. It, it, it's just the guy's always got a way to get a deflection, get a block shot, do something to disrupt the offensive play. Green dribble handoff. Stalwart. Does the same there. Martin Jr. to Green. Green backing up. Reaching in with Martin. He leaves it there for Jones. Jones looked left. Now pushes back out right. Stalworth. Four on the shot clock. They got to move a long three attempt off the mark by Kimasa. And they got exactly what they want. The guy shoot the ball from outside of his range. Great job sliding your feet during that half-court defensive possession. Definitely not a three-point shooter is Dan Camasa, now two of seven from the arc. Braun, Kerwin Smith in the game to Fifi Adu. Back to Smith. Off the mark from an area he's not quite familiar with. Look at this D one more time. They're running kind of this little Dribble handoff and we're rolling guys to the middle, hoping they can beat their player. If not, they hope they can get somebody over playing out on the wing, cutting back and get the back door action. But Lopes were very steady defensively last trip down the floor. Two of their last 11 is GCU. Stallworth called. Oh, Stallworth can't believe it. He can't believe it. He's like, hey, listen, I'm the guy trying to come off of the down street here. How am I getting whistled for the foul? He said, disbelief. Look at this full court presser. Pressure out here, excuse me. Russell wants Martin to move up. Starwood leads these, but Carroll's with 100 assists. Up over the top, Smith. Oh, just came down. Hung up in the air. Yeah, they like that Horde's hindsight to get the big guy rolling, but he floated that pass. Starwood drives, doesn't go. Hold up and down the court. 
Gooseball, Russ is trying to grab at it. Trying to get a timeout. Yeah, get it. Yeah, Russell wanted to get in there and, and get after that ball, but you got to remember he's got that bad mitt. He didn't want to jump in there and oh. risk further injury to that right hand. 11.54 on the clock, 10-9. The Lopes holding on to a one-point lead. We'll be back with more as the Lopes battle the Vaqueros here at GC Arena after this timeout. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. I am Laura Rosoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Grand Canyon men's basketball is brought to you in part by Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. Back at GCU Arena, Beach Volleyball getting honored here on the court. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, we saw just a few moments ago, Oscar Freyer stepped out of the game. He was out on the trainer's table, shoe off, and he did suffer from a level ankle sprain, kind of got tangled up with the opponent with his foot. The good news, talking with GCU trainer, he's going to be okay. He is cleared to play tonight if needed. But, man, I tell you, let's get the petition going for the GCU trainer, Jordy Hackett. Has he had his work cut out for him this season or what? Yeah, poor Jordy Hackett, you can see right there, just that left foot gets kind of hung up on the foot of uh, Gary and Clark. There's, there's, there's Jordy. Does he get, like, uh, paid by the injury? Because <laughs> he's making out like a bandit this year if he's getting paid by the injury. If he's just getting his regular old hourly pay, not so much. Big Ten mountain biker, Jordy Hackett. That's right, he does like the mountains, doesn't he? He doesn't. Be a little good walking trail too. Right? Kind of like the base of Tom Stump over there. Oh yeah, beautiful. Good spot. Browns Ranch up there, Pinnacle Peak. Jones on the inside, kicks back out. Jones driving into the paint, looking for the bucket, and he does off the glass. Uh, Keontae Vernon so cognizant of not wanting to get a cheapy little foul, didn't step in that driving lane. Would have stopped to an 0 for 5 drought over close to two and a half minutes for the Vaqueros. The drought continues to the Lopes there at 241 and counting. Russell. Martin, reach around there by Walter Jones. That's going to be free throw. That's, they're all over the limit in the penalty. And GCU's Jared Martin is going to go to the line to shoot the one and one. They're already four or five from the line tonight. These will be free throws number uh, six and seven. Well, you wonder about the layoff coming down with that illness this week. Limited his action against Bakersfield. Really knocked him out. Jones leaves their green, green driving. Kicked back out into the corner. Three-point attempt. Too heavy. Pulled down. By the Lopes. Here, Keontae Vernon doing a man-sized job on that glass tonight, getting five rebounds. Russell, moving a floater in for Dwayne Russell. That was filthy. That was just not nice what Russell did to that young man right there. He acted like he was going to put his second hand on the ball, pull it for his jump shot, and then he slid his hand away and drove it inside for the floater. Dixon in the corner for Jones off the mark. Fifi grabs it. Away from Barnard Jr. Nice job on that glass. Did Dan say he had a seven foot two wingspan? Is that right? Can that be right? It can be. Yeah. 
Beefy back out, Vernon looking to drive, kicks back out, Martin for three, good! Oh, Deontay Vernon is playing some basketball right now. He's setting up his teammates, but unfortunately they don't get back in transition defense. They give up the easy lane. Jared Martin after the three gets called for the foul on Dixon. The hoop and the harm is second. Look at that penetration right there. Look how far Martin's guy came. All the way from the three-point line into the paint to guard Vernon. That's why I love that inside-out pass. Guy who's been struggling with his outside shot a little bit, Martin. You give a guy a clean look like that, that's like shooting him in practice in an empty gym by himself. Prayer back in for Josh Braun. He'll inbound to Russell. Carroll's did not go quietly into the night, will he? Look at that, he's a one, two, two, four, four, press. Ah, Freyer threads the needle back to Russell. Martin open look for three. Connects again! Oh, they might have woke the sleeping, sickly beast now feeling a lot better after back-to-back -back three point buckets. Long three. Pull down by Adu up for Russell. Dwayne Russell! Oh, foul on the play. Well, they counting that bucket? Got Russell on that right hand. He's grimacing and shaking his hand, but I was curious why Frayer didn't give him the straight pass. He gave him this bounce pass, and it really slowed Russell down a bit. So go back to that one by Martin there. After you make one, guys find you again. Nobody on you. You got to take another one, and he knocked it down. So he's showing some confidence out there on the floor tonight. Russell connects. Masa takes his seat. Jerry Colangelo. Hey, hey, hey. hey Godfather of Phoenix Sports taking this one in. He knows how big this game is. Russell connects on both. 75% free throw shooter coming in. Dixon. Tied by Freyer. Over to Green. Loses the handle. Picked up by Russell. Russell. Vernon driving, right hand, and in! Keontae Vernon is playing some basketball tonight. Running the floor, using his wheels, getting on the glass. Oh, beautiful push out by Russell. Fifi and Now they're getting some defense and leading to some easy opportunities. Blowing this thing up to a 10 point advantage. Coach Hill needs a timeout. 10-point lead and 9-0 run after a long drought. The Lopes have awoken from their slumber. Yeah, Jared Marge has been fantastic behind the arc. Good defense, leading some easy run outs for Russell where he had to get fouled. And then this one here by Adu, losing those long arms there and going up and slamming that one home. I always love when the player slamming one way and then they kind of hold on to that rim just long enough to swing their body momentum back the other <laughs> way. That's pretty sweet. Only three more home regular season games after tonight. Be sure to get your GCU men's basketball tickets right now. Great WAC conference tickets for upcoming games against New Mexico State Saturday night. Chicago State on the 23rd in the final home game of the regular season on the 25th against UMKC. And remember the GCU Arena, great place. Bring the entire family. Reserve your tickets now by contacting the GCU box office at 602-639-8979 or log on to lopestickets.com. Brought back out McDonald leaving it there for New Abazor. Leads for Dixon. McDonald nowhere to go inside. Kicks back out. Xavier McDaniel Jr. loses it. Fifi Adu driving. God! Deontay Vernon! Deontay Vernon is doing his darn thing here tonight. Give him four, six points now and, and five rebounds and a number of good plays that have led to easy opportunities for his teammates. And smothering defense forces another turnover. Xavier McDaniel Jr. too much heavy there. Pressure by the Lopes. They'll inbound with timeout on the clock. Just a tick under eight minutes, 26-14. Barry Butel, Scott Williams with you. Keontae Vernon just highlighted with that nice slam dunk. Yeah, perfect timing, exactly. Dishing you know, out some dimes, too. He's been dishing, and he's running the floor is what I really like because he's using his wheels in his transition. He's playing to his strengths now. 
I think there's sometimes in basketball games, especially against Bakersfield, where he doesn't play those strengths. I love this one right here. This is a basic NBA set. This is a power set. You got the bigs going down here to set screens for the guards to turn out. Well, they both turn out, but this is they put a little wrinkle. As the big goes down, watch Keontae Vernon come back and get this nice bounce pass. We'll roll, roll that. And then we'll see, he gets that bounce pass now. Now he got the defense, freeze it one more time. Now the defense is beat. He's trying to overplay out here on the wing. Josh Braun sees that, he's already starting his motion. And Vernon does the nice thing, he slips the ball back with the right hand, away from the defense. Hope side defense cannot rotate over, rotate over in time, hooping a harm. Yeah, Vernon's doing it, six points, six boards, two assists. And he stayed out of foul trouble tonight. Yeah. So now he's able to put an imprint on this basketball game. I, I think the sky's the limit to this shot, man. Remember how good Randy Plays was a yep. year ago? Yep. He stayed out of foul trouble. He was always getting you double figures and, and scoring double figures or around double figures and rebounding and a couple hustle plays, a couple hard nose, uh, hard hat plays, too. That's the kind of. Uh, player, you know, Vernon can be there with the Smash Brothers last year. I think there's times where he misses his, his other Smash Brother when they're out there on the floor, but he's learning to do it, you know, now on his own. I mean, Darian Clark's been banged up a little bit. Uh, Kerwin Smith's been playing okay, but it's nice when he's using his wheels. Well, look how great that was energy. instinctively to come down there and follow up if they do on what many would consider, you know, an easy put back by a dude to be there in the right spot at the right time to put it back. Yeah, absolutely. That's hustle. That's yep. not taking anything for granted. And of course, if you're the only one down there and that ball should come off, hey, that's an easy rebound and bucket. Well, it started one for one, then they went a little chilly at two for 11, and now they're back at it six for the last seven. Whoa. Ill advised cross court pass by Oscar Frey. It all starts right here, though. You can't catch the ball in the coffin corner right there. It was six inches in, away from the half court strike. Use that to, the half court line as a third defender. That's jail. McDonald. I by Vernon. Dixon back down. Driving. Right hand and in past Keontae Vernon. Oh, pretty move by Dixon. See why this guy went for 41 points in a basketball game earlier against UT Valley, or Utah Valley. Dixon, Lloyd gets it back. Dixon swarmed, but Lloyd's there. Oh, too heavy, pulled down the rebound. Back out, long three attempt, too heavy. Vernon with a hand on it, but Dixon's able to gather it in. And then a little flat-footed by the Lopes. Dixon, little hand off. Oh, by Freyer. Freyer seems a little bit off. I don't know if it was because of that injury he went out with, coming back. A couple of miscues here. Yeah, you remember he's still a freshman, too, yep. so yep. It, he, he's got, got to work his way back into it. There's, there's no doubt about it. Six offensive rebounds for UTRGV. Yeah, get and see those second opportunities. This is, you know, we'll show up a second chance points here. Driving back in there, get uh, Fifi to do caught out of position, gets that right hand up, but it's it's stretched outward, and it's an easy call for the official. Donald's going to earn himself a trip to the free throw line. They do it his first. McDonald, a 73% free throw shooter, now 25 of 34. Across the center court. 6.43 and counting opening half. He was right, player. Inside, quick pass from Martin down to Keontae Vernon underneath with a left hand off the glass. You know, that's my favorite part. I, I get on this guy sometimes I want him to shoot the ball more, but he's just so good at other things on the floor. And being unselfish is, is a great quality to have if you're a basketball player. McDonald. Driving, right hand and up and over two Lopes. Mo McDonald from McAllen, Texas. Yeah, they're battling the Lopes. I mean, I thought the points in the paint would be a big advantage for the Lopes, but they're getting some twisting and curling drives and getting their own opportunities inside. No bucket. What? That official say he was on the floor, not in the act of shooting. That definitely counts at the next level, but not down here in the NC2A level. This is. 
You know, a nice hard drive. He gets fouled, takes one step. I think that's the step that they're not going to give him at this level, but wonderful concentration regardless of being able to finish that play. Rayer off the mark. Boy, what could have been a three-point play ends up in no points for the Lopes that trip down the floor. McDonald back out front, looks left. Lloyd, Dixon. Dixon comes back out front. McDonald trying to work on Russell. Unsuccessful. Dixon to his right. Six on the shot clock. Back out. McDonald's going to try for three. I don't know how Keontae Vernon ended up outside on uh, McDonald, but he didn't want any part of being out there. His instinct was to come back to the basket, and that's how he got the open look. Six-point lead, Freyer for three, off the mark, pulled down by Loy. Getting a little chilly again for GCU. Dixon driving. Martin, he just somehow muscled his way over the top. That's exactly yeah. what he did, little Mac truck. Took it right to the chest of Jared Martin, went right over the top. 7 0 run for the Vaqueros, last minute 21. Four point Lopes lead. Russell to his right. Freyer looking for three. Off the mark, rebound. Vernon tried to keep it in, unsuccessful. Yeah, I don't understand that one. I, that, you know, Martin's knocked down two threes that gets a good penetration and kind of a Two guys on the ball with Russell, gives it back to Martin. That's the one he's got to be looking. Okay, this is my turn now to fire another one. I've just dished a couple. Give it over to Oscar Freire, who hasn't, he hasn't hit the shot from outside yet. I think that's the one he's got to send, send Freire to the glass and let he go ahead and fire that ball up there. Kenzo Nudo in the game for Freire. Mike Nuabazor bringing it up. Bellflower, California. In the corner. Green. Takes it back from Jones. Russell picks off the return pass. A great switch and great recovery by Russell to steal the pass. Green leaf up a three-point line is. Oh for two! Keontae Vernon! Good three. I saw that one coming, but I didn't think Vernon was going to be able to go up and that high and grab it after I saw the pass. But he got that ball outside the edge of the backboard and then slings it back through the hoop. My goodness, put that one on a highlight reel. I want to see that one later, guys. Wow. That trap's like that. New Amazor leaves it there. Green stopping, popping. Four point lead now. Yeah, you don't let the machine green heat up. They finally got in that scoring column here. Now it's just one of five from the field, but he can get it going quickly. He's back from Russell. Oh, Vernon almost picked off. Looking for Braun. Quickly, Russell. Russell who's left. McDonald behind him. Stops. Rebound pulled down by the Vaqueros quickly up the court. New Abazor in the corner. Mo McDonald stepped out up bounds. It's a good timeout for GC. They gotta figure out a way to get Josh Braun involved in the offense again. He's only got four shots in the game. 330 on the clock. The Lopes lead it over the Vaqueros 30 to 26. The Lopes trying to win their 12th on their home court. I'm Taylor, and I'm getting my Bachelor's of Science degree in Marketing from GCU. Moving on campus was one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all of the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here, and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. 
Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already. And what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Fans, you can support your GCU Lopes in the 2017 Coaches vs. Cancer three-point challenge. The American Cancer Society, the National Association of Basketball Coaches, and the nation's premier college basketball programs are all teaming up in the 2017 Coaches vs. Cancer three-point challenge. Pledge your donation now by going to pledgeit.org slash cbc-grand-canyon. Got it? Follow the national competition at threepointchallenge.org. Tell Scott Williams, Kate Longworth from GCU Arena. Russell. The big week came out. Ooh, Braun in the corner for three. Bam! Can I call it or can I call it? I know they didn't get Josh Braun going in here. They come right out, run the little misdirection play, find Josh Braun in the corner for a much needed three. New Abazor leads for McDonald on by Kenzo Nudo. Green looks for three. Front of the rim, both. Oh, Martin and Vernon kind of climb. I love his facial expressions. Leads for Martin looking who's all alone. Oh, it doesn't go. Pulled down. Myra Bigwe. Jones just inside the uh, top of the key. Don't know what happened with the rotation there. Jones found himself wide open from the free throw line. So, and by Antonio Green. Lavazor comes over. Inside Vernon, quick move off the fingertips. Inbound by the Lopes with 12 on the shot clock. Looking for Kenzo Nudo over in that right corner. They're getting the ball inside. They're looking to the opposite wing or corner. And sometimes when you're passing those chest passes across like that, it's easy for a defender to get a hand on the ball, maybe utilize the overhead pass or a bounce pass. Player inbound. Braun just run at that needle. Ball didn't drop, but he got the foul call against him. New Abazor. It almost looked as if Frere handed the ball to Braun when he was out of bounds. That's how close the spacing was. And then Braun, we've seen him a couple times go to that spin move with his left hand. He just couldn't handle the contact and the finish. Three on New Abazor. <laughs> Havoc still in the holiday spirit. Two minutes and two seconds left for GCU down the stretcher. They cannot give up easy shots or second shot opportunities here. Take this lead to the half. Green short from the corner. Vernon. Oh, looky. Oh, man. That was a gift. Up for Kenzo Nudo. Oh, oh, oh. Fortuna's bouncing the ball yeah. there. Finds up. Braun, who gave it to Nudo, or was it Mark that gave it to Nudo? Either way, Nudo was running that left wing, cut across the middle, and got the bucket. Corner. Got it go. Oh, bucket. Yeah, basket interference. That ball hung around the cylinder a little longer than the Vaquero wanted. He couldn't hang any longer. Sometimes they're just so juicy when they're sitting up there, you can't. You can't help but put your hands like, hey, hey, try not to, try not to. It comes in there and it just takes it off the rim. Rob is over. Under a minute and a half to go, opening half. Lead is back to nine. Ooh, away from the play. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> is that real big yeah, no, it's, I think it's Green. Hey, Green get him with a little forearm shiver trying to chuck a guy coming across the key. And unfortunately, that's going to be the uh, 11th team foul, so it's going to be. Uh, Two free throws for the 
One of the best free throw shooters the WAC conference has ever seen. Josh Brown, the mayor? He got ice water in his veins. Did I have the fall wrong? Was it not on green? It's Rubigli. It was Rubigli, okay. Third for him. 6 8. Redshirt Junior forward. Kigali City, Rwanda. Yeah. Only two Rwanda players in the whole of NC2A basketball. They're both here on this uh, UTRG V team. Dan Kamasa, the other. Green driving. Noodle. Doesn't go. Russell. Minute left to go up for Vernon. Can't put it home. Oh, there's Braun looking here. Merry Christmas. Dixon. Oh, reached over. Look out. Vernon went down hard. He got tough as nails. He popped right back up like he landed on a P-sized mattress. Yeah, that was fantastic. I, mean, I can't believe they got beat down the floor, but Vernon, he goes down, he bounces on the ground, but he pops up like he landed on a waterbed. My goodness, the dude's tough. Lopes got this little expansive uh, lead here because it was getting a little tight. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, a, it was about a five-point game when we looked up on the clock with 2:02 to go and said that they needed to get some get some stops and they got them. And unfortunately, the two that they don't get at that and now the two free throws are given up on this and they really could have blown this thing up. But just a nine-point, uh, excuse me, 19-second differential between shot and game clock here. They got to make sure they manufacture a good shot on this trip down the floor. Lopes break the press. Russell, 40 on the game clock, 19 on the shot clock. Donald Iron Russell, oh, nice ball skill, stopping, popping. Oh, Wayne Russell put on a grip. That was pretty right there. Don't see him go to his left as much as you see him go to the right, but certainly has that ability. Now a stop right here to go to the half would be huge. Shot belongs perhaps to the Vaqueros. Dixon taking his time. 12, 11, 10, 9. Dixon to his left. Back out. Long range. Short. Rebound. Braun up quickly. Russell stopping well beyond the arc. Kaboom! And you can't really draw it up any better than that. You get the ball back out of bounds with 49 seconds to play. You get the bucket you want on one, and you get to stop defensively and just put under four seconds to play. Russell gets it all the way down the floor for a clean look at three. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, coming into this game, you wanted to see your team step up its toughness. Are you pleased with what you've seen in this first half? Yeah, I think we're doing all right. We lost a little bit of focus. Uh, didn't make any shots, layups down there, but came back, started shooting the ball better defensively. Uh, we got to communicate a little bit better on our switching, but. Uh, it was a good way to end the half. I think we really stepped it up. Yeah, and Keontae, too, it seems like stepping up, and that's being contagious for the rest of the team. Last game, just two points, one rebound already now. 10.7 rebounds played the majority of the well, first Well, I mean, half. Keontae's been good for us all year, all year long. Last, you know, he played 14 minutes because he fouled, fouled out. Uh, he's got to stay without getting his fouls, no cheap fouls. Uh, in the last game, he just got in foul trouble and couldn't play. So he's huge for us. Well, here's to carrying over that momentum that we just saw from the Lopes to end out that first half, 46-30. Now we'll see if they can carry it over into the second half. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Coach Marley. Yeah, Dwayne Russell nails the th three-pointer. Has 11, four assists. Josh Braun with 14 points. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GC Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. Lopes lead it by 16 at the half over the Vaqueros from UTRGV. Hello, Phoenix. This is Jerry Colangelo from Grand Canyon University. You can join the GCU community by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors and get the support you need to excel. I look forward to seeing you on campus. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. 
If you see a top play or any great WAC action, let us know about it using the hashtag WACTOP5. Then go to our Instagram every Monday to see if your video made the cut. Be sure to vote on your favorites and tune in to the WAC Digital Network on Wednesdays to see where each play ranks. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Jesse Punch. Bye -bye. Grand Canyon University's newly remodeled golf course is thriving in the heart of Phoenix, featuring over 7,200 yards of expansive tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, premium greens, and a brand new clubhouse and restaurant. Experience a university championship golf course this summer with great rates as low as $15 available now. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Welcome back. A live look inside GCU Arena where the GCU dance team is on the court right now. But it was an impressive opening act by the Lopes with a 16-point lead right now over UTRGV. Dan Marley wanted to see more toughness from his team. They started the game that way and they ended the first half that way. So we'll see if they can carry it over. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Lopes Halftime Show on Cox 7. And I'm joined now by Bridget Binsbacher. And Bridget, you are from the Peoria City Council. And I know for you, the partnership you've been able to establish with GCU over the years means a lot. Especially last year, you honored the university with an award. Take me through what that was all about. Uh, that was about the uh, STEM Scholars Program which is a very meaningful partnership. And we, the Peoria Education Foundation honored uh, GCU for this innovative partnership. And uh, it was recognized on a national level as well at the White House uh, by the Obama administration and for being such an innovative partnership. And what the STEM program does uh, disciplines are the way of the future, without a doubt. And so this program prepares our college students, our, our next generation, for the future, for future jobs, to be competitive and to build a strong labor force. And so it allows an opportunity for these kids to start as part of a dual enrollment program, to start taking core STEM classes um, that in some cases allow them to complete up to their first year of college at no cost. So it's, it's an opportunity that they may not otherwise be able to have or afford. Yeah, absolutely incredible program and you see why it would be recognized not only locally but nationally. And GCU really just continues to grow and develop. Now the university has over 17,000 students attending classes here on campus. And GCU is putting a lot of time, resources, money into the university. How is that helping the surrounding cities and community? Oh my, it is absolutely a point of pride for the West Valley, without a doubt. Um, West Valley, all of the West Valley cities are working together to find ways to really create a strong labor force. And it's especially important to Peoria because we're, half, we're less than halfway built. So we're targeting um, you know, high tech industries that, that bring quality jobs and having a, a, a prepared labor force for that uh, really strengthens our story and our marketability and GCU has, they've transformed themselves in recent years uh, into the economic engine they are today with nearly 10,000 jobs. There's no doubt that they'll be at 25, 30,000 students in the near future. And they've done this and put millions and millions of dollars, like you said, into academic education infrastructure. And they've done this through their own general fund, not government dollars or public dollars. And um, that's tremendous. It shows their commitment to enriching lives, not just spiritually, but academically, and really helping us to be a player here in the West Valley and for Peoria with all of the growth opportunity um, it's it's tremendous and, and our biggest successes come as a result of partnerships meaningful partnerships right. and this is a perfect example well, and speaking of success you've got to be looking at Dwayne Russell tonight doing a lot on the basketball court but he's the pride of Peoria he attended 
Peoria High School and was voted the Arizona Big School Player of the Year his senior year. What's it like for the community to now see him here playing locally? Uh, again, a, a tremendous amount of pride that we feel. We're so proud of, of Dwayne and his family, really, has made Peoria so proud. Um, this is, he is a perfect example of how hard work, commitment, dedication, put him in a position to really be able to choose his his destiny. And he's demonstrated himself to be a solid natural leader at the college level, at the high school level. He's going to do it in life. And, and it's fun to watch him for sure. And I know for the community and celebrating Peoria tonight, a lot of members in attendance. And thankfully, Dwayne Russell and the Lopes putting on a show right now. 16 point lead at the break. We'll be back with more of the Lopes halftime show right after this. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Back on the campus of Grand Canyon University. Beautiful evening in Phoenix, Arizona. And for the Lopes, they lead it by 16 over the Vaqueros. Gary and Scott back with you here tonight uh, in uh, the first of a couple of uh, pretty exciting matchups tonight, obviously, and then Saturday night against the Aggies from New Mexico State. But an, an opening half where they went one for one, then they went on a little bit of a chill. They came back, went on a, like a six for seven run, got a little chilly again, but finished very strong. And it's all about the finish, isn't yeah, that isn't right? It? You know, the start and the finish, the most important things. I love the start, the little high percentage shot, the little back drop there by um, Keontae Vernon was fantastic. It, it, it just got a little chilly from there, but like you said, they finished strong. I love that one by by Josh Braun right there using the spin move down there. He had 14 points in that first half, and then Hoffman, that ball found him back out on the perimeter, and he knocked down the long distance shot. Russell was really good in that first half, especially the way he finished the basketball game. I love that one right there with a little floater after tricking the defender with the little uh, hesitation move, and then my favorite, Martin out of the corner, knocked down a couple three-pointers in that first half. But, you know, Dixon's an 18-and-a-half point score for a reason. He finds a way to get to the basket, and he had 11 points in that first half. I love that one because we see this a number of times out of a dude just using his long arms in transition to get those steals and burn and clean that one up. And then a, a long shot by Bo McDonald from from outside, but this was the highlight of the half right here as Bunch Vernon uh, throws down the thunder a slam as he went vertical. And then Russell was so good down the stretch. Oh, I love that one. That's a little steal there. It came to Kinzo Noodle that he had, he had the jump right before this one. Comes up and gets that one with four seconds, gets it all the way down the floor and gets a clean look at, look at that eye of the Tiger right there. He wants this big three tonight. Field goal percentage in favor of the Lopes, four of 11 from the arc, turnovers, nine to five of the Carrolls. Points in the paint, big, 23-16. We'll take yeah. a timeout. The lead is 16 by the Lopes. We'll be back after this timeout. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. 
We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting edge next generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. Well, we're just moments away here at GCU Arena for tipping off the second half as the Lopes have a 16-point lead right now over UTRGV. In part to the strong play by Josh Braun, the mayor with 14 points to his name. Meanwhile, the pride of Peoria, Dwayne Russell with 11 points. Keontae Vernon with 10.7 boards leading the way for UTRGV. Nick Dixon with 11. Second half action tipping off right after this. We'll be right back. Hello, Phoenix. This is Jerry Colangelo from Grand Canyon University. You can join the GCU community by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors and get the support you need to excel. I look forward to seeing you on campus. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. If you see a top play or any great waction, let us know about it using the hashtag WACTOP5. Then go to our Instagram every Monday to see if your video made the cut. Be sure to vote on your favorites and tune in to the WAC Digital Network on Wednesdays to see where each play ranks. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Jesse Punch. Grand Canyon University's newly remodeled golf course is thriving in the heart of Phoenix, featuring over 7,200 yards of expansive tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, premium greens, and a brand new clubhouse and restaurant. Experience a university championship golf course this summer with great rates as low as $15 available now. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. We are back at GCU Arena where the Lopes lead it 46 to 30. They started the second half about to get underway. The Vaqueros came back to the court with about a minute to spare. Coach Lou Hill must have had plenty to say to the Vaqueros from UTRGV. Frayer will inbound at center court right in front of our broadcast location. Fans remain on their feet. I got bad breaking news, Barry. What's wrong? It's final. Really? The Tar Heels have gone down 86 to 78 at Durham to the Blue Devils. Sad. Sad news. You're going to be all right? Yeah. Well, I'm a pro, so I'm going to yeah, make it through the second half. And right. uh, GCU is going to have to do a lot more of what they did in that first half because they got it rolling. But you remember, this team was down 14 uh, to uh, GCU and came back and took a one point lead, so they could not lose their focus in this basketball game. Dixon, dribble handoffs, he goes back and forth, green, eight, seven. Dixon in the corner, Stallworth's gonna take it. Uh, we got a little hip push from Keontae Vernon. <laughs> I love Keontae Vernon. Stoic face, hands straight in the air. Meanwhile, he, hip he, check. he mauled him with the lower part of his volley. He, he sent the little fella flying. Yep. Was he shooting? Yeah, he was throwing something up towards the basket. Eh? 
I, I think Oscar Frey was more in a, in, of a shot mode, or just as much as Star Wars was on that particular play. And that one from the first half, where they, they didn't give Frey the opportunity to go for the uh, and one. He made a little line shoot the one and one, and he missed the front end. Inbound on the press, Russell swarmed by two. Braun's gonna muscle his way past Antonio Green. Leaves for Russell. Russell. Big left, went right. Frayer looked inside. Nobody home. DC not there. Russell down low. Darian Clark off the glass. And up and over the glass. <laughs> I think you were premature with your call on the glass. He squirted that ball all the way up to the top of the backboard. Uh, Darian Clark, he's been working hard tonight, but he just can't believe some of the luck or bad luck he's had around the basket tonight. He's had some point blank looks and he hasn't been able to get to go. He's got the three boards, but 0 for 5 from right around the basket tonight. Lloyd's there, doesn't go. They give him another rebound. Doing good things out there, just can't get anything going off this. Oscar Freyer had to adjust that move off the glass. Gets the hoop and the heart. How about in mid-flight? Because he was going straight to the hole. He had to adjust and go off the glass. Yeah, I was trying to shut up so you could make this call, but <laughs> this guy's like a, a streak down that right wing. And uh, nice job running that wing and getting the contact and finishing. That's a couple times tonight, the young fella. You don't really see that out of a lot of freshman players to be able to finish while moving at top speed the way he was. Dixon driving into the paint. No arm. And Clark. Clark's trying to recover from around the free throw line, high post area, to get back down to cut off that baseline. But there's no way he can get his feet set in time to take a charge. So he tries to stay high with the hands, but oh, Dixon, he's just so crafty. Look at those 41 points. And he didn't even make a three point shot in that, that game when he had those 41 points. He gets a lot of those points the way he did just right there on attacking that basket. Little side, Illinois. Nick Dixon connects, three point throw. Russell trying to bust through his feet from the Vicaros. Yeah, they gotta get more players deep so Russell has the threat of being able to throw that ball a little longer. They got five guys all the way on the, on the back side of the half court line. Russell, player came out to assist. Bronze in the corner, back over to Vernon. Braun, open look, oh, off the front of the rim, rebound. Clark. You can tell if it's Clark or if they got uh, Vernon there. I think they got Vernon crashing on the glass. There's some quick, quick fouls for Vernon after picking up, uh, excuse me, I think that may have put on Clark. After getting down in the first half, a couple fouls on the bench here in the first two minutes of the second half. Brayer and Clark each have two, as does Jared Martin. Oh, Vernon picked the pocket. Walter Jones, Russell, pick the dish. Oops, ball went off. Walter Jones. Brayer, who was right, wrong. Gonna try for three. Go! Well, if you don't make it the first time, you certainly gotta go after and try it a second time. And pretty much the same spot, maybe about four feet to the left. But Ron delivered the second time he talked that took that three. Forward to his right, back out Loy. Green. He likes it from three-point land. Cross court near so at night. Near side. Stallworth unsuccessful. Get it out. Also push that basketball up with the best shot. And Jones again. They tried to run from behind. He thought he could see his steal that ball from Russell because he had these back turn. But look at that one one more time. It was just a quick pass out to the corner. The mayor made him pay for not staying with him. So everybody who has played tonight has scored a, for the Lopes tonight. Jones takes a seat with three personal fouls. Hoffman checks back in for the Vaqueros. Inbound to Gary and Clark. Looked inside. Ooh. Ill advised down low to Vernon. Driving Stallworth back out. Boy's going to try for three. Off the mark. Out of bounds. Off of UTRGV. Ronda inbound. 
Player takes a seat. Martin's in the game. Russell back to Braun. Up for Vernon. Vernon driving. Hunt. Well, right now, the bigs are messing up offensively. They were making some nice passes in that first half, but right now, uh, Vernon and Clark are turning this thing over like the hotkeys. They got to get the ball back in the hands of the playmakers, Russell and Braun and Martin. Let those bigs do what they do best. Run the floor and pass blast. Dixon Green. Green wants a three, and he gets it. Yeah, you get a little sloppy with an 18 point lead. You got people out here playing outside what their normal roles would be and give up a three on the other end. And it's a small thing to cut it to 15, but it's a momentum thing. They can get a stop right here and get this thing under 110 points. All of a sudden, the Carrolls feel like they got life to try to steal one on the road. First three for Antonio Green, one of six from the arc. And 100 threes coming in. Clark! <laughs> Well, right now, Clark, he, he got fouled, but I know that's one had he been playing a little bit more, he would have absorbed this contact easily and finished that basket. Yeah, he can't believe it. He knows he should have finished that one with the amount of contact that he had. That should have been a three-point play. He knocked that first one down cleanly. He's disappointed with himself, but he's not going to hang his head. Fifth-year senior is going to try to play himself through it. He's still got a lot of time left in this basketball game to do a lot of good. And like I said, he has been getting on the glass, so I don't want to make it look like the, the young man hasn't contributed at all tonight. Stallworth takes a seat. Mo McDonald back in for UTRGV. It's the free throw and takes a seat. PPA do in the game. Dixon, near side, Green, backing up on Martin, looks to his left, he wants another three. One of seven now, is Antonio Green, who came in 100 of 247 from the yard. Braun pulled down the three, moves inside, far side, Fifi Adu. Off and eyeing him, Russell. They're down by Green to his left. Foul on Green. And Green hasn't seen speed like that, moving to his left like that. He did the right thing. He took away the strong driving hand of Russell, but Russell's gotten so good at moving to his left now, just nothing Green could do. Let's send it over to Kate Longwood. All right, guys. Well, tonight we're talking about Zero the Hero. Really nothing new because Dwayne Russell tends to grab headlines when he steps on that court for a strong play here at GCU. But it is a special night tonight because GCU is celebrating the city of Peoria. And you can't talk about Peoria without talking about the pride of Peoria. Dwayne Russell was joined today by his grandmother, Lynn Young, and Uncle Will Roberts on the court to honor the city of Peoria tonight. Russell graduated from Peoria High in 2012 and led the Panthers to a Division II state title. He was also named the Arizona Big Schools Player of the Year his senior year. He led the state in scoring his senior year at 27 points per game and had just over five assists and four rebounds in those games. Since joining GCU for the 2014-15 season, Russell has averaged just over 14 points and just under five assists in 78 career games. And he's following that trend tonight already with 11 points, five assists to his name. The Peoria, Arizona native, currently ranks second in the nation in minutes played at 38 minutes per game and ninth in the country in scoring just over 22 points per game. Guys, we get to see it night in, night out. Dwayne Russell live in action here. But really, I know we've all been impressed just the way he's stepped it up this season. You see him on the top of so many categories in the WAC, from scoring to assists. He really knows how to do it all. And you can see how his teammates feed off his effort and his results up there. There you see his uncle and his grandmother. Peoria Pride. 11 points, five assists for Dwayne Russell. Hard work, dedication. Doesn't matter if it's on the basketball court, it can also be off the court. He's got 24 minutes tonight. He's only got two turnovers, but he's got two steals to make up for those two turnovers. And remember, he's getting pressured as soon as he gets the ball about some 90 feet away from the basket. 
Wilkes from the arc are 5 of 13, while the Vaqueros are 3 of 16. Abazor bringing it up. Leads it there for McDonald. Does the same for Dixon. BPA do. Vernon Braun came over. Gave it to Fifi. Second. That's a really good defense by Adu, but he just got a little too aggressive with the, young, the lower part of his body, much like we saw to Vernon earlier. He had played great on the drive, but when the double team came, he wanted to put too much pressure on, on Dixon, committed the foul. Dixon, stopping. Oh, dropping. How about that bounce? Out. Did you see the way that thing banged off the back rim, front rim, went way up towards the top of the square, hit the backboard before falling back in. Sometimes when you're a shooter, you get bounces like that. Russell coming near side, back over to Martin. Ooh, pull down the three. Now he's going to drive. Stop, floater. Ah, doesn't get the roll. I've got to teach these guys my patented pull-up jump or from this side time. the free throw line. I've got to make it more practice yeah. before, before that can happen. <laughs> McDonald off the mark. Low ball. I think they're going to give that one to the Vaqueros. I, Ooh, I thought the, I thought the low for the last one. Yeah. We had the weak side official came in and, and said that the, I can't see what slopes it was in that green uniform that touched it, but knocked it out of bounds. You're out of three minutes for the Lopes. McDonald. Robazor leaves for Dixon. Dixon. High by Martin. Oh, he loses the handle. Martin looks up for it. Vernon's going to pick it up. Vernon, bounce pass, Fifi, wants it from the three-point line! <laughs> I was just thinking Vernon needs to give it up. He got two dribbles over half court, and he certainly did found Fifi doing that left side, whose right foot was in front of the line. He took one step, pulled it back, so he wouldn't get two and a half points. He'd get all three. Oh, it look like Martin got his feet planted. Three on Jared. Go back to Fifi and do it one more time. Wasn't the best pass. He almost lost it. But see that, that right foot kind of step forward. He goes, oh, no, no, no. Let me pull this thing back. I want all three. I want everything I'm supposed to get. That's what my old guy, my old teammate, JRE, used to say. I want everything I'm supposed to get. He'd go in there. But those, he was a man child our freshman year. And he'd get fouled. Those guys would be slapping at him. And he weighed about 245, 250. He was just bounce off them like they were uh, just little flies and ticks, and then he finished the play underneath and says, Scott, I'm going to get everything I'm supposed to get out here tonight. <laughs> Russell in a sweet move, floater. Not there. Vernon can't get it. How did Vernon lose that one? That was going to be an easy putback for him. Sometimes that ball comes off that rim, and it's got some funny spins on it because of the contact it makes with the iron. But that was one that Russell could have handled, and I would have put him back over the. Well, he's got, he's got ten and eight. He's got a couple rebounds this half, but he's yet to score in this half. I'd like. I was thinking he might be able to get a 20-10 game tonight. Jamasa in for the Vaqueros. Boston takes the seat. New Abazor stepped out. And did. Xavier McDaniel Jr. Yeah, a simple pass along the perimeter. Just didn't handle it well and lost it out of. Lost it right in front of the bench at McDonald's. Did I, did I tell you his sister plays for the Tar Heels? He's got a sister that plays for North Carolina Tar Heels. Burning underneath. Not there. Picked off by Russell. He wanted it back. How about a second go around? Keontae Burning. No doubt about it. A wonderful play by Russell. He said, you, know, you guys want to pressure me in the backcourt. I'll hang around here in the backcourt and get a steal as third of the game. McDonald for three, too heavy. Vernon with the rebound. Hey, Vernon, boy, I'll tell you, he's, he's having himself a game. Give him nine boards now, one away from that double double. Down low, Vernon! Oh, where did he pull that play out of? Oh, he's got the strength and the flexibility to be able to score around the basket. 
Coach, he'll see it enough after a couple inside buckets in this lead. Balloons the 23 points. 62-39. After that, he did kind of the Barney Fife move, you know? Yeah, look at this one more time. That's a good steal by Russell. No hesitation. Unselfish. Gets it over to Vernon. One power dribble to the right side. I love that one right there. A little bounce pass. And then up and under with a little English on it. Spun it off that backboard. Quick down the rim and from the inside the basket. 12-43 on the clock. Keontae Vernon. 14 points, nine boards for the Lopes. Put it into a bit of a drop for DCU while it's swung back their way. But the Carrolls are on a bit of a drought of their own. Two minutes, 39 seconds. You look at the assist leaders in the Western Athletic Conference. Russell with five per game. Brandon Randolph from Utah Valley University at four and a half. Lou Stallworth right here on the court at four. Ian Baker will be here Saturday night. 3.7 and Preston Westendorf. Seattle yeah. University 3.5. I don't know if you know this or not, but Saturday night, <laughs> it's a pretty big game. Honking huge. Huge. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one, Barry. Uh, Barry. You know there's a white out to, uh, for that game. Yep. So if you're coming down and you're going to be in the house, make sure you wear something white, bright. Oh. Heck, even if you're watching at home, get in the spirit, wear something yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. Send it in. Love to see those tweets. Yeah, in New Mexico State right now, they got a big one out in California at Bakersfield. Hopefully Bakersfield will wear them down a little bit for the Lopes, huh? Could be a bit of a slugfest between them. Keontae Vernon tonight. Keontae Vernon's oh, been throwing please. some some haymakers out there, using his wheels in transition, and then not giving up on a, a play here. He's, I don't know how many dunks he's got. It seems like every time I look up, he's powering that ball through the basket. That's probably his most skilled move, and that's just power. He comes back with a little finesse right here. I don't know if he needed to go around that defender, but it sure did look pretty. Stallworth, McDaniel, leaves it there. Wabazor, McDonald, quickly, McDaniel, trying to gather it in, lost it a bit, back out, McDonald for three. Front of the rim, rebound, who else? Double-double for Keontae Vernon. Yeah, Keontae Vernon's doing it all right now. He's been setting career highs left and right, scoring and getting on that glass. And he's got three assists tonight. He's one away from setting a new career high with assists if he can get one more. BP. Russell Braun Vernon combining 43 points, 15 boards, 13 assists. Kick back out. Russell's going to try for three. It's short. Martin Newick kicks back in. Tried to hit the uh, feet, but Camasso over to Stallworth, open for three. Aaron Braun, oh, battling after on the floor. Left it up there for Abazor. No bucket leveling Fifi Adu. Yeah, Josh Braun went down Ooh. hard again. He grabbed the back of his legs, and he's blowing really hard on the basket. Ball court, I think everybody's all right, but I love the hustle we're seeing on the floor. 62-39, GCU in control against the Vaqueros from UTRGV. We'll be back right after this. GCU's College of Science, Engineering, and Technology offers a premier STEM education with relevant curricula designed to lead you to a career in the competitive fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. GCU is investing in the future of our STEM programs with multiple state-of-the-art facilities, providing students with access to cutting-edge technology. Our STEM education is motivated by a Christian worldview, which cultivates ethical decision-making. The College of Science, Engineering, and Technology fosters traits in adaptability, collaboration, creativity, as well as ethical and social awareness, which makes our graduates from our STEM programs more competitive. Through robust collaboration and partnership with industries that require a STEM-prepared workforce, our faculty concentrates exclusively on student success within a deeply nurturing Christian setting. Find out more at gcu.edu slash CSET. 
welcome back. A lot to cheer about tonight at GCU Arena as the Lopes have a commanding lead over UCRGV. 62-39 with just under 12 minutes to go. Speaking of uh, games and how the scores are varied right now, well, let's take a look around the WAC. Grand Canyon women fell short tonight, although they staged quite the comeback, falling to UTRGV at Texas, 49-52, the final there. Meanwhile, Utah Valley comes out on top. Their final score there, 84-76. Kyle Stewart, who was named the WAC Player of the Week, coming up with the leading score for today, the high score for today. Now, Seattle University, big winners at Chicago State, 90-65, the final. But I know what you're zeroing in on right now. Under 12 minutes to go in the first half, CSU Bakersfield has the lead, 11-10 over the Aggies. It's obviously still early. We'll keep an eye on that game. Bakersfield did come in here to GC Arena, upset the Lopes. We'll see what they do against the Aggies. You'll remember the Aggies are 20 game winners right now, 20 game win streak. CSU, Bak CSU Bakersfield is actually the last WAC team to beat them in WAC tournament final last year in Vegas. The Aggies are 34 2 in WAC regular season play over the past two seasons. And oh yeah, they'll be here Saturday night, front and center for a whiteout here at GC Arena. Big match of Saturday night. The Lopes wanted two teams over the last three seasons to defeat the Aggies mm -hmm. from New Mexico State. Right here. Yeah. Oh, it's a big game. Love that. I mean, we need this place. They even stormed the court. They even stormed the court. That's, that's right. They sure did. I love that. They stormed the court when they, uh, they won at home, too. <laughs> they weren't really prompted here. They just did it on their own. Nobody told him to go on the court. Russell with the ball to his right. Stopping, popping. Big rebound. Fifi reaches over the top. You know, Fifi didn't want to reach over the top, but the defender does a nice job jumping backwards as a deuce coming in. And a dude got whistled for the foul. What is that, his third personal foul tonight? Lopes with a commanding fast break margin, 17 to four over to the Carrolls. McDonald to his left, far side. Stallworth driving, pushes back out. McDaniel Jr. Tomasa with the rebound. McDaniel Jr. wants it back. That's off the mark to the right. Russell climbs up and grabs it. Vernon. Russell, freeing up Russell, stopping at top of the key. Daniel Jr. with the rebound. Leslie Varner Jr. back to Stallworth. McDonald, now to Varner. McDonald throws up the three, off the front of the rim. Russell, oh, ooh, careful. Russell finds himself in no man's land. Over the top of Braun. Ooh. Left arm. McDaniel Jr. grabbing Braun. McDaniel Jr. can't believe it, but he thinks it's a free ball right now. And both of these players have equal opportunity to ball, but you can see McDaniel left arm goes into Braun, and the officials called him for the foul. I don't know about that one. I think that's two guys going after a loose ball. May the best man win. You didn't see that left? He hasn't he established any position as they're running for that ball. I would have done the exact same thing. He learned that one from his pop, I guarantee you. <laughs> I got it. I still got bruises from uh, X-Man's elbows in my rib cage and small of my back. I should, I should, I should elbow Junior for payback for what his father used to do beyond the floor. Uh, yeah. They probably throw me out of here like they did Oakley last night. You see, you see Oakley get tossed out of the garden? Oh, I love what karma does its thing. Apparently not a huge fan of Mr. Oakley. Yeah, you can tell I didn't like too many guys. I mean, what's up with that? Vernon underneath. How about the show? Keontae Vernon is putting on. Well, he really is playing his uh, rear end off tonight. He was one of the guys that we spotlight and said, hey, he's got to bounce back. He's got to be a lift driver, not a lift operator. He had to drive this team tonight, and he certainly had. 9-0 run until that bucket by the Vaqueros. The Lopes were entertaining. 
One of their last nine now. UTRGV. 9 15 and counting, second half. Russell to his left. Martin leaves it for Braun. Antonio Green on him. He's going to stop, try for the three. Doesn't go. He got away with a walk. He really froze Green because he changed his pivot foot right into his jump shot. He ended up getting a clean look, just couldn't knock it down. Marner Jr. short, looks for the rebound. Nice one-hander off the glass. Keontae Vernon. He ended up grabbing his thumb or yeah. finger or something on one of his hands there. He, he got a digit dislocated. Uh -oh. lost the ball. He had to stop and push it back to Russell. There's some strange moves down here on the offensive end. I think the officials in this 21-point disadvantage are deciding they're going to put their whistles in their pockets and unless there's something egregious out there, they're not going to call enough. Braun driving baseline, loses it. Kamasa applying the pressure. There you go, Little Sparling's got the look that I got right now. It's a very sloppy play in the last couple possessions down here on the offensive end. I mean, outside of the burning buckets inside, they haven't gotten a whole lot going on. DPA Du takes a seat. Kenzo Nudo, Scottsdale Chaparral in the game. Green pulled down, now he's going to try for three. Short. Martin pulled down the rebound. Kenzo picked it up off the floor. You know who's missing in non-action tonight is Kerwin Smith. When is yeah. Kerwin Smith going to get back in his basketball game? He's the only loaf that had to score tonight. I don't know if it's just a matchup thing where they've gone a little smaller and Vernon's going so good. Clark's been playing well, but Ooh, Russell he's picked certainly up by Moore. Get cut. Dixon on the glass. Oh, Keontae Vernon. Keontae Vernon can't believe it. They've been letting him play basketball and then some Slight contact on the layup attempt. The officials are going to award him with the three-point play. Wow, he, he put the whistle away and he decided to dust it off. Yeah, I said that too soon, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, he did, didn't you? Dante Vernon with an end. Murray B. Town, Scott Williams, so glad you could join us for GCU basketball here on Cox as uh, the Lopes have opened it up here and uh, looking pretty sharp as they get ready for New Mexico State. Well, defensively, they look great. They were very active early on. I think Coach Marley crapped that whip in practice and told him we're going to get back to the basics and what GCU is making their foundation, what they're building their program on, is on their defensive side of the basketball. He's always going to have players that are going to be able to score. He's a good coach. He teaches them to go out there, play free, play loose, and fire. But if they're not going to get stops down the stretch, they're not going to play, and he's going to find five guys out there that can work as a unit in communication and not giving up easy opportunities. And Josh Braun has been one of those guys, along with Keontae Vernon, that has done it. But Josh Braun, I mean, he came out right from the very beginning with the backdoor cut that got himself going, and then the three-point falls after that, hanging around the basket. Keontae Vernon showing that activity. They punch that ball loose, so I will pick out behind the three. Line. He's had some good footwork down on that low block, spinning left hand turns to the left hand. And how about this right here? What is this? Greatest of all time. In our in our go. No, oh, greatest of all time. Okay. I don't know what the NRA means. So what's, what's that? Mean? I don't know. You know how these <laughs> kids are today. <laughs> I'm not sure what that one was. There was another picture of somebody else on the on the booty part of that. Uh, uh, antelope, I didn't, uh, I didn't see what that, that was. was. Under 18 is probably laughing at us because we didn't identify who that person was. No, we don't know what NRA means? No, the, the guy on the right on the uh, on the, oh. on the gluteus maximus part of the antelope. Uh. Let's send it over to Kate to bail us out. Kate. NRA is the North Rim Apartments here. Every oh. game, the Havoc and the different dorms Duh. come together. They paint the antelope, decorate it. That was their idea, so. Oh, They're praising you, the mayor today. Ah, we should have picked up on that. Uh, uh, that's some prime real estate, those North Rim apartments right down Lope, right on Lopes Way. All those Panda Express, Chick-fil-A. Uh, I, I know the restaurants. I don't know the apartments. Subway. <laughs> yeah, if they would have put Chick-fil-A on there, I would have known exactly yeah, what they were right. talking about. I love those nuggets from Chick-fil-A. Oh. They don't love me back, unfortunately. So many choices. Russell driving underneath, out to Nudo, looking for three. Oh! You gotta love that. That's the old hammer play. We ran that one in Milwaukee a lot. Darvin Ham would get that ball, sling it from out of bounds to Ray Allen or Glenn Robinson in the corner pocket three. Barnard Jr., Antonio Green driving. 
Well, Three. they're saying on the drive that Russell, or Nudo, excuse me, correct that, were inside the restricted area. Got Kitchell for the foul, but then on the other end, Nudo made him play. Yeah, well, it was Keontae Vernon got whistled for the foul, but Nudo does such a nice job of going to the deep corner. That's a hard thing to teach young players to do, but it's easy to, with the ball to make that pass to the deep quarter because it's always away from where the defensive bodies are. Green connects. Inbound, Nudo. Back to Jared Martin. Russell. Under seven minutes to go. Wolf's in control. Russell back to Nudo. Nudo driving into the paint. Goes wide right hand. Draws the foul on Loy. How about that? I, I looked at this kid uh, and I said, you know, he, he's kind of a one trick. Uh, pony, so to speak, he likes to shoot the three-point shot, and then he surprises me by driving it in there to the basket amongst the trees and getting the body contact and going to the line. So, you know, a guy that's probably wasn't even supposed to play this year because of that nasty Achilles injury is starting to develop some uh, new moves out here on the floor. I mean, that's a nice play. That's all the way from outside of the three-point line to the other side of the rack. Oh, it rings out. Braun unable to pull it down. Hoffman to Dixon. Oh, a little skip there. Back out. Green off the mark. This three-point master is one from nine from the arc. And Russell off. Well, he says he's a streaky shooter, and tonight he's a off streak. Russell moving on Dixon. Draws the foul. It's going to be free throws once again, so... I think I did the old commentator jinx when it came to the officials for a while. They weren't calling anything out there on the floor other than a couple calls down on one side. Now they've realized they got to balance it back out over here and call some fouls down on this side. You know, what was going to be a quick moving game for us there? You're, like, you're, 30, you're looking man. at your watch like you got a movie you're headed to or something yeah. late night. No, oh, I, <laughs> I was moving around. Yeah, the, the, the game, the pace of the pay was, uh, was really flowing, and now it seems like it's come to a screeching halt. On a full leg instead of a 10 minute mark, and it was moving right along. And in the last four minutes, it's just been a foul fest. Dixon, lead for Green. Looking to go over the top. Martin with the rebound. Oh, careful. Jared Martin swarmed there by Lloyd. <laughs> he was assaulted by Lloyd underneath that battle. We call it. Russell, I'm just going to shoot. Oh, he doesn't get it. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he never leave the basketball. Uh, he had two guys on him, and they both oh. left him to go to. Defenders are the offensive players without the ball. Dixon left hand and in. Foul called on Jared Martin. Let's not talk about the whistles anymore. No, I don't like to get on the officials. I, 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 and I think they're fouls. I, I'm not disagreeing that they're not fouls, but it's tough for players to adjust when all of a sudden there's there's a, num a, a certain amount of contact that's being allowed. And then it, it, it's a, a quick change to now they're not allowing them to play the same way. It makes it hard on the players to adjust midstream. Not so much on the officials to adjust midstream, but the, the players to adjust midstream. And that's certainly what we've seen here in the two halves of the second half. But, you know, what was it? I mean, this game's in hand. GCU's going to win this basketball game. My only question is, you know, if they could have kept it a 25-point game, they could have got Russell off the floor. He's played every minute tonight in a tough game coming up on Saturday night. Now they've got to keep him out on the floor and kind of just run the show for at least another two, three minutes before they can get him off the court. Dixon driving all by himself, puts it in off the glass from underneath. Martin sits down with four. Oscar Freyer checks in. The kills making it a bit of a run here. Always wonder in big leagues like this. You just wouldn't hold the ball for 30 seconds and then throw something up at the rim. Have all your guys back on defense. Limit the amount of possessions the rest of the way. There's no way they could win. And you save energy and bumps like that from one of your star players in a situation where you don't need him to get nicked up. Hoffman fouled. How about Nick Dixon quietly? 23 points. Well, he, yeah, and he's gotten a number of these here uh, lately. I mean, he had 11 at the half, and 
all of a sudden he's getting a lot of drives to the basket and one situation is getting to the foul line. Dixon, near side, McDonald. It's inside. Oh, goodness gracious. Dante Vernon call. His fourth. Bit of foul trouble now for the Lopes. They got to be careful. You're looking at me, Barry. I, yeah. I, I, is it a foul? Yes. It has it been? Could it be a non call? Absolutely. I, I just think if you're Keontae, you've seen the whistles continuing to blow. That's when we already have established a pretty darn good position as a defender. There's no reason for the right hand to come across the right, you know, the, the right shoulder of the defender. Just keep that hand back, maybe just play with your lower body, he would have been, been absolutely fine. Does fatigue weigh into any of that, you know? Braun, three! Yeah, it certainly can. I mean, yeah, the more tired you get, the more apt you are to reach rather than using your feet defensively. And, you know, my, my whole thing is, you got a great game going, you're seven to 10 from the floor, 16 points, you know you got three fouls. Don't get your fourth that way on kind of a non-play. Carroll's on a 7-0 run here in the last minute, five seconds. Braun pushed it out to Kenzo Nudo. They haven't hit a bucket in two minutes, 41 seconds and counting. But Nudo, he had a couple guys he could have possibly passed the ball to, but he realized the only opponent that they have is the clock. Pull it back out, don't force something inside. Get the ball back in the hands of your playmaker. Also, Ooh, fingertip there by Dixon. Went off of Nudo's knee, said the official. Well, Russell tried to pass it over the Nudo. The ball got deflected, and then allowed the defender to close on Nudo, and he couldn't secure it. Gets into his left. Inside, Lloyd. Stone there by Braun, but a travel call. And Lloyd couldn't get turned around quick enough after setting that pick and roll into the basket, got whistled for the violation. 3.57 on the clock, 70 to 55. The Lopes holding on as the Lopes are two for their last nine. Getting into some foul trouble. Martin with four, Vernon with four. We'll be back to see how this one finishes up at GCU Arena. I'm Taylor, and I'm getting my Bachelor's of Science degree in Marketing from GCU. Moving on campus is one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all of the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here, and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already. And what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Grand Canyon men's basketball is brought to you in part by Canyon State Credit Union. Committed to you. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longwood. Back with you from GCU Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. Abbots are in the house. Havoc's been going nuts for about an hour before game time. And they got these tiki torches down that they, they love wave, waving over our heads, Barry, yeah. as they do their little dances and chants. And oh, oh, they're starting to, start to hypnotize me or something with what they're what they're doing. You can hear them. Even through my headsets, I can hear these loud Havocs. And one score update, CSU Bakersfield has gone on a 20-5 run to take a 30-16 wow. lead over New Mexico State. So maybe might snap that 20-game win streak. Braun, back out, Nudo, he's gonna drive it. Loader, good! <laughs> Gotta take back what I said about this kid being only a three-point shooter. He's shown the ability now to take it to the hole, and now he's got a little float game, too. I stand corrected, young man. I apologize. 
Green. Looks inside. Dixon back out. Hoffman. Too heavy. Wow. Dwayne Russell went high to get that rebound. Yeah, I can't believe Russell's still on his yeah, right? floor right now. Five boards to go on with everything he's had to do as well as handling this double team. Oh, look who's stuck in the back door. Kenzo Nuno making some noise here Probably in the game. They double team Russell. They didn't rotate out of that double team fast enough. Josh Braun fouls Nuno on the weak side. Smothered chicken underneath here on the defense of them. Ten uh, points for Kenzo Nuno. Season high. Russell Burnett. Oh, foul by Hoffman. A UTRGV. They found something here in the second half. They might be able to hang their hat on in their next game, but uh, for the most part, it's been all lopes tonight. Russell just gave him that, that look, you know. That's numbers a night for Vern in there. 16 points. Make it 17 with that free throw, 11 boards. It's been one of he's had three assists for quite some time. He hasn't been able to pick up that fourth assist such to give him a career high. It seems like about every other time we do a basketball game, he's setting a new career high in some statistic, whether it's points or rebounds, and I was hoping he might be able to do it in an assist tonight. Seventh double double of the season for Keontae Vernon. Kamasa back in. But Kamasa doesn't see the minutes he used to enjoy. And they play a little smaller and a little faster, and he doesn't get to be out there with these guys as much as he used to. But I think he's a quality player for UTRGV. Russell picked that one off. Robertson guarding him. Near side, Fifi. He wants three, drives baseline. Vernon wants him to come back. Vernon doesn't go. He's improved in that area. Jones stopped by Braun. Russell goes out of bounds off to of Mike Robertson. Wolf's ball. Well, a couple times now. I think they, yeah, Coach Molly said enough of these drives to the basket. Start playing some defense down on the defensive end. They've blocked a couple shots. They had one before, and then this one right here. Was that was it Vernon or Ron? One of those two came over and swatted that thing away. Vernon's pass to Kenzo Nudo goes through his hands out of bounds. Here come the Vaqueros. Marley stressing just to calm down, slow things down. Robertson is to his left. Bounce pass to Massa. Vernon with the rebound. 144 and counting down. The Lopes looking to win their 16th game of the season. Yeah, they put this one back in. You know, let's talk about, well, they can't. Oh, another steal in the turn over here. Jones is going to get the lay in, but. They can't win the whack. Probably tough time finishing second as Bakersfield is up 35-18 at the half. But they can play for a 21 season, and that's a big thing in college basketball. You can get back-to-back 21-win -back 20 seasons. That's that's huge as you try to establish yourself in next week or next year rather. That transition period of not being able to play in the postseason ban is off. And, Go out there, win that Western Athletic Conference tournament, and take yourself to the big dance in your first year of eligibility. I think that's something to build on here going down the stretch of these games. Nehemiah Allen checks in for Dwayne Russell. Limited minutes, Nehemiah looking strong. He's appeared now in his sixth game this season. Back in the corner. McDonald moving in on Nehemiah. Look at the D-line. <laughs> Nemo's doing a good job over there. That's not an easy thing to do. You've been sitting down over there for about two and a half hours, stiff as a board. Then all of a sudden, you first action in, you find yourself having to guard the ball. He slid those biscuits real well and forced the player into a travel situation. Good job by number 40. Juan Washington in the game for the Lopes. I mean, Russell's got a break. <laughs> Oh, Russell, I'll tell you what, he lost some heavy minutes for Coach Marley, doesn't he? Fifi, Kenzo Nudo. 
35 seconds and counting. Nudo twisting, turning, diving. Picked off. Stallworth. Oh, that's not going to work. Double dribble. And that should just about do it now. If the shot clock is turned off, I'm pretty sure Coach Marley will make these guys dribble out the rest of this clock. If UTRG doesn't try to do something full, it's like trying to steal the ball. This is your final score here. The Lopes will win this thing by 19 points. So good job defensively once again. I mean, they, they held them to only 16% uh, shooting behind the arc in that first half, and that set the tone of how they were going to play defense. They're going to come away with their 16th victory tonight. And the game is over. Lux win, 76 to 57. Well, congratulations to the Lopes. They are in this victory tonight. They flat out played the Valcaros. No doubt about it. They needed to respond after that three-point loss to Bakersfield here on their home court. They come out strong here. Getting back to what Marley talked about on the pregame show, they need to really make statements, need to play physical basketball. Be dominant on their home court. They are now 12 and 3 here on their home court. 16 and 9 overall, 5 and 3 in the Western Athletic Conference. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. Well, congrats, folks, back in the win column. What stands out to you tonight with your team's effort and production in this bounce back victory? Well, we did a good job. We held them to 57 points. It's a team that scores a lot of a lot of points, second in the whack. So Defensively, we were pretty good. Um, thought we played a lot harder, got some stops, and was able to get out and run. We got some easy baskets. And what's it going to take one day and a half to prep for New Mexico State, the big game Saturday? We know what they're all about. They're a really good team. Uh, we know what we're going to have to do. We're just going to have to come out and play our style of basketball and play hard. All right, thank you. Congratulations tonight. Best of luck Saturday night. It'll be a wide out here at GCU Arena. And you hear. You heard Coach Marley, maybe. It sounds like he lost his voice tonight by talking about the Lopes returning to their own game, that toughness they've been known for. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, head coach Dan Marley. The players doing what they do, win or lose, make their way around thanking all of the fans, even taking some selfies. He got some chips out of it. Look at that. Yeah, he he deserves it. Chips? Yeah, he, he went for 39 minutes tonight. I think should have got him a whole bag. Look at that game, half a bag of chips. What's that all about? <laughs> Dwayne Russell making his way around after this big victory over UTRGV, 76-57. We'll be back with our player of the game. We'll have a look ahead to Saturday night as well as we close things up from GC Arena after we step aside here on Cox. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting-edge next-generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. 76-57, the final score, GCU over UTRGV. The field goal percentage in favor of the Lopes. Free throws 19 to 26, points in the paint. 
by five and three blocks for GCU. Yeah, I really like the defensive field goal percentage. I think Coach Barlow is going to like it more than me, 33%. And then, you know, they even did a better job. It looked like they had gotten sloppy in that second half, but actually the numbers were actually better than in the first half. But the tone of it really, in the, it took place in the first half of that game. They took away the strength of UTRGV, which is a three-point shot in that first half. They hold them to just two of 12 shooting from behind the arc. Let's revisit your three keys with a Texas flavor. Yeah, well, one is you know, mess with Texas, and one was run, run them off that arc, and I think that was the biggest thing right yeah. there. Just just three for the game, and both uh, two of those came in the first half, like we talked about. The defense was fantastic. Uh, I really liked the way they got after them there, and uh, you know, with, with scoring the basketball, they lit up that scoreboard that we talked about. You know, they shot 52 percent in the first half on their way to 51 points. That was a a real key to how they were going to play tonight. And then they whisper, I think they listened to the coach tonight. They got after the, the extra pass. They got the reboundings. They got steals. Uh, eight of them, as a matter of fact. They blocked a couple shots. I thought the defense, the help side defense, and everything was was wonderful. And look at the assist. This, this is a huge number here. I, I can't remember the last time uh, we, we've circled a, the assist box where they've right. had 19 assists. That's, that's just a wonderful number. We talk about uh, the threes for the Vaqueros. Antonio Green came into the game with 100 made threes. He was one of nine from the arc, had 10 points. That's about seven and a half shy of his season average coming in, so they shut him down. Yeah, they went after him. They identified the players that could hurt them uh, and took away their strengths. You're, I mean, those 100 threes you talk about, that, just to put that in perspective, that leads the nation. Yeah. Uh, no player has, has made more in the entire country. You talk about all the the big boy teams in the top 25 and everything, and this kid right here in the whack has been knocking him down at a high clip. So they shut him down, never let him get off that launch pad. Did a great job with the smothering defense and use those baskets, some of those steals that they got, uh, especially in the end of that first half when they pushed out to a, a large a double digit advantage. Uh, it was Fifi Adu and Russell really led the way getting those steals, getting those transition buckets. One guy that led the way, a seventh double double of the season. For Keontae Vern. Well, he was the man tonight. It started with a little backdoor pass. He got himself going and he hit Josh Braun and then used his wheels really good all night tonight, especially you know up and around that basket. I don't know how many times he played up at that uh, above the tenth floor, slamming that ball home. I love the one he got from Russell on the baseline where he caught that thing back way behind his head and cranked it down for a hard slam. That that was the most impressive one of the night. And, when he's aggressive and he stays out of foul trouble, he's a monster. And uh, I don't know if there's too many guys in the whack that can handle him with his physicality and his athletic ability. The pride of Peoria is standing by with Kate Longworth. Of course, when you're celebrating Peoria night here at GCU Arena, you're going to go after the pride of Peoria, right? First of all, we're going to get to the game. But first, what was it like to have your grandma and uncle in attendance for tonight's oh, game man. and a lot of members of your community? It means a lot, you know. Peoria is like a big part of my like in my heart. Uh, we won a state championship my senior year, so you know I'm just happy that everybody got honored me, uh, like honored a Peoria tonight. And for you, was there something? Sometimes there's big games you want to go out there and really play. Were you feeling that a little bit? Yeah, you a little bit, because you know I had seen a lot of my friends, a lot of old teachers and things like that. So you know I just wanted to uh, really come out here and get a good win. And you guys did just that. What did it mean for the team to bounce back after that tough loss on Saturday and come up with the big W? It really meant a lot, you know, because that game, that, that game kind of hurt us a little bit. You know, we wanted that one, but uh, we bounced back today, so we just got to look forward in the whack. Coach was talking a lot about bringing you guys back to what GCU basketball is all about, the toughness, the mental toughness, the physical toughness. Did you guys notice that this week in practice? And how do you describe it? No, wait, wait, first, let's go back to that. We're watching highlights, but I saw that smirk. What was practice like this week? It was tough, you know, but uh, we got back to what we always do. Um, we ran a lot. We got after each other a little bit, but it was, um, in the long run, it's going to help us out when I'm um, going down to the right. We're going to win a lot of games because of that. And how do you describe GCU basketball? It's everything. You know, it's amazing to me. I can't believe that this is right in the back backyard of Phoenix, so I'm just happy to be a part. And I know we all look back on last season. There's a game that really stands out, of course, when New Mexico State came to town. You guys took care of them with that big upset victory. Mm -hmm. What are you anticipating for Saturday night? I know it's going to be electric. I know the Havocs are going to be here. Hopefully we can bring our game. And for you, per, uh, physically, how are you feeling? How's the hand? I'm feeling better. You know, um, it hurts a little bit, but I'm, I'm fine. All right. Pay, playing through the pain, but hey, it's showing up on the scoreboard. Great job tonight. Congratulations, and go have fun with your community thank and your family. You. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate All it. Right. Zero the Hero, also known as Pride of Peoria, and it was a big name, good game for him and his fellow Havoc, celebrating right now with Keontae.
lot to celebrate and then right back to the practice courts getting ready for Saturday. Yeah, they got to get their game face back on. Bakersfield's giving them a run for their money. Uh, they'll be uh, they'll be interesting how they come in, whether they've put an end to that uh, winning streak or whether it continues. They're going to have to rebound here in the second half, are the Aggies from New Mexico State. Yeah, getting smashed right now, 35-18 yeah. disadvantage. And uh, we know that Cal State Bakersfield team can mm -hmm. score, score that basketball. But, you know, you, you don't keep the Aggies down for long. It's a 40-minute game, and I'm sure they're getting an ear fill right now. And uh, they'll, be, they'll be ready to go out in that second half. But if you're, if you're GCU, you can't worry about what's no. going on over there. I think Coach Marley found something in practice, the way he had these guys fired up to come out and play tonight. They do that against the Aggies on Saturday night. This place going to be rocking and rolling. They get off to a good start like that. They can feed off that momentum and use that for a whole 40 minutes and come out here with a victory. All right. Well, it does not get any better than this. New Mexico State in town Saturday night. College basketball fans, come on out. The WAC leaders, the Aggies, winners of currently 20 straight games. They swagger into the arena to take on the Lopes in hopes of avenging last year's loss at the hands of GCU. The only WAC loss of the season for the Aggies. Tune into 3TV for the Lopes pregame show with Kate Longworth and Tim Ring. Starts at 630. The game will also be shown online at GCU.TV and heard on the iHeartRadio app. Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena tonight. With the Lopes beat the Vaqueros from UTRGV 76 to 57. Please join us again Saturday night. Lopes taking on the Aggies. For Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel. Wishing you a wonderful evening.